that right now we're in this big debate of l lots of churches are trunk or treat lots of churches are saying there's no problem dressing your kids up go trick or treat go do your thing there's no issues with it at all you me and a couple other guys are speaking out saying this is not a godly holiday christians should not be participating in this this is not something we should be partaking in so what i would love to do tonight again this is your show your platform you can say what you want to say go where you want to go but i would love for you maybe if you give us a, a, your testimony where you came from kind of like because people are saying like well what gives you the right to speak on halloween listen if you guys know john ramirez's testimony you're going to find out in a few minutes why he has the right to speak on halloween but brother john if you wouldn't mind just the floor is yours you share your testimony and then we'll talk about halloween and then we'll give some historical context and then we're going to do q a which i'm very excited about so man feel free to just share your testimony the floor is yours and man i i just want to say first of all i just my bc bc before christ my other my other demonic brother Anton Avani say, I want to thank every Christian parent that you allow your children to celebrate the devil one time a year in that wow. year. And, and if you have a demonic person that he was the founder of the church of Satan to say those words out of his mouth, that should be that should be, that he, he is telling you that you are celebrating the devil and he is giving you props, not in a good way for you to be a lukewarm religious christian to allow yourself to be in bed with the devil one night wow. and, and and i tell you I, I i identify with apostle paul in my story in my testimony what god's testimony is i identify because at seven and a half years old i was recruited from the second heaven a necklace with the seven demonic powers fell from the second heaven and fell down at my feet i grabbed it it was full of demonic colors i grabbed it i put it in my pocket when I put it in my pocket, I heard my mom's voice calling my name, Johnny, come home. I was with a kid in the neighborhood. He was well, he was like the kid bully in the neighborhood. I put the necklace in my pocket. I didn't want him to take it from me because I left me an impression. The necklace left me an impression that when it fell to my feet, it was something automatic, not even thinking, it stuffed into my pocket. And then when I heard my mom's voice, there was no way my mom could call me. I was about a mile away from my house. There was no way I could hear my mom's voice. It was a familiar spirit. That sounded like my mom. I told my friend, my mom's calling me. I ran home, put the necklace on my, my neck. That uh, when I hit eight years old, six months later, my mom is walking and my aunt is walking to the witch's house in order to do car reading, tower car reading, because my aunt, the, the lineage of my family came from Puerto Rico, from witchcraft, on the on the fact that my grandfather was a backsliding Christian. Wow. He was an alcoholic. And the witch, he got into a, a dispute with the town witch. And the town witch said, remember these words, I'm going to kill you and go to your funeral. Wow. And she ended up killing my grandfather because he was a, he was a backsliding Christian, a lukewarm Christian, an alcoholic. She killed him with witchcraft. And my aunt, which passed away three weeks ago, she avenged the death of her father against the witch. And she that's how the witch, that's the open door. They came into my family bloodline to be witches and warlock on the highest level. And uh, the, 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 when, when the necklace fell, I put it on. I went to the witch house. I got my first car reading. At the AJ gate, I got my first ceremony, and I was sworn into the dark side. And I was sworn into the to, to witchcraft, a centuria, spiritualism, and later on, Palama Yumbe. And when I, those are the three, really the three most demonic occult practices, even wow. in, in occult practices, on, on the side of the, that spectrum stands Freemason, Illuminati, One World Order. On this side of the spectrum, it stands, San, it stands Santeria, Spiritualism, and Palama Yumbe. And then the other the other occult practices are in the middle. So so as I grew up, I went up the ranks doing, I was born a demon church already at the age of eight years old. I was sitting in with warlocks and witches that, that were in the, the occult, what we call it the religion. The religion, and I want to rephrase that word. I want to say that word a few times. The religion, they called it. And the devil, had, we had our own demon church. We go from 7 in the evening to 5 in the morning. Wow. Eight years old, I was already doing demon church from 7 in the evening to 5 in the morning. Being trained, being groomed, being discipled to be the highest, highest. The, the, devil, the devil later on described me to be the gatekeeper of the kingdom of darkness. And I grew wow. to that level. And Marion Halloween. I had a demonic wedding on Halloween. Witches and warlock are the highest ranked levels of witchcraft. Came to my wedding, got demon possessed. Mediums, high power mediums came to my wedding to get demon possessed, to baptize my wedding, 
an ungodly ceremony with blood rituals and animals sacrifices to baptize my wedding. It wasn't a wedding of, uh, you know, here, go to the registry, go pick out a toaster or microwave for him. There was a wedding of witches and warlock coming and releasing demonic anointings over my wedding, uh, blessings, demonic blessings over my wedding. I grew up, grew up into that and seeking the clubs in New York City, seeking the lounge in New York City, looking for victims to recruit to the dark side because I know how to open doors by the words that came out of my mouth. That's why I tell people when you have dreams, when you have demonic dreams, when you have demonic encounters, don't sit with the devil because the devil will out-talk you, the devil will out-convince you, and the wow. devil will out you. Because the Bible says it's really clear. The Bible says you resist and rebuke the enemy. He will flee. Not sit down with him in Starbucks and have a coffee and negotiate a conversation with him. The only person that was able to, the only person that was able to, the only person that was able to beat the devil down in a conversation with Jesus Christ in the wilderness. But every person that had a conversation with the devil, they either lost their birthright, they lost the condo, like Adam and Eve, they had a conversation with the devil, they lost the condo, they lost, they lost their God-given right because they sat down and had a conversation, and the devil knows one thing, he has the power of words. And he knows wow. how to negotiate. I had the power of words because there was a ceremony done in my mouth, a witchcraft ceremony done in my mouth, and it's, it's a demonic anointing they put in your mouth. And Proverbs 18, 21 say, the words of life and death lays on your tongue. So there was a ceremony done in my mouth. It's called a chair. A chair is a ceremony. It means a demonic anointing over your mouth, over your word, over your speech. When you release it to the atmosphere on that person, you hypnotize that person. You convince that person. You dominate that person. You incarcerate that person's starts, and you bring them into your battlefield. You bring them into your territory. I had that ceremony done in my mouth. And as I was growing up to the to, to the ranks, being a warlock, being a wish doctor, uh, do, I'm, I'm talking about, I, I was even, I, you know, people say, well, you know, people, the only way they can categorize my my uh, walk with the, with the devil was uh, he's a Satanist. Satanist is, is a pawn on a chess game. I was I was way, way, I was in the highest level of the shadows. It's called the shadows of the demonic, a place that very few people could reach that level of the atmosphere of the demonic. The shadows of the demonic is when you can shape shift yourself to animals, wolves. You can you can actually project to the highest levels, to the second heaven, cursed regions. I had ceremonies on that. I had water spirit ceremony. I had uh, ocean spirit ceremony. I had mountain spirit ceremony. I had cemetery spirit ceremonies in my body. I, I was cut here because you have to shed the blood to sign the contract. And and then I had demonic demon contracts with Halloween. Wow. Halloween had demon contacts for Halloween all and November 1st, the day of the dead. A lot of people celebrate that. No, November, November 1st, El Dia de la Muerto. That means you celebrate dead relatives, you bring flowers, you bring food, but you're only catering to demons because if your family is dead and they would if they're Christian, they're with Jesus, then they don't want to hang out with you. They they're having a good time with Jesus. So so and if they're not with Jesus, they're in the other, they're somewhere else, they can't talk to you. Bottom line. And and I grew up in that level into 1999 that I actually, actually I got demon possessed in the church and grabbed the pastor by the draw, picked him up in the air, demon possessed. And the pastor had no anointing to get me off him. He needed 10 men, came up the church, 10, the 10 strongest men in the church. And I was flinging them. I was throwing them around like rag dolls. And the pastor couldn't, the pastor couldn't breathe. I did that twice in the church. The Lord, and then in, in 1999, I was sitting in my bed for the first time ever being depressed. And and I couldn't believe why would I be depressed because I never I never experienced that in Come my on. life. Never experienced to be depressed in my life because the satanic devil worship I was, I knew how I knew how to walk in the demonic. And I think I knew how to live in the demonic. I knew how to cater to demonic. I had I had a front, I had a front. I was at a front seat with the devil. I can sit with the devil all night long, have conversation when I'm here, show up in my apartment. We'll sit there and we'll talk all night long. I had the pot, the car drone. He'll sit on the other side of the car drone, the meeting place of hell. He'll sit on the other side. I sit here, we'll talk. Sometimes he'll show up as human form. We'll talk all night, conversation all night, recipes all night, rituals all night. Uh, uh, new co talk about new contracts. Talk about report cards, demonic report cards that you have to have an A. And the uh, first six months, A, you got to maintain the A, the last six months to finish strong for the year. So in December was one of the strongest months for devil worshippers on the highest level because you didn't want the devil to be disappointed. And meanwhile, we 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 in we in we in we at the mall shopping 
when the devil is getting ready and now you want to get ready in January and the devil has a month on you spiritually. Wow. And Halloween is a month of, of the third quarter at the highest level of the demonic. So that's why you see the celebrations, you see the rituals, you see the, the sacrifices, you see the, 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 you see, you see the, the animal sacrifice, human sacrifice, humans that are missing. You see all these things because they are desperate to get the blood. They are desperate to get the human bone. They make contracts in cemeteries for people that work in cemeteries so they can buy skulls, they can buy human bones. Because if I had, I had the skull, I had the human bones. So what I do is I attach it to a demon. The demon can walk on the earth like a human being because I had the body parts to do so. So all that level there, 1999, I sat in my bed, my brother, and I was complicating suicide for the first time in my life. I wow. wanted to commit suicide because I felt Jesus was pulling me so hard this direction. And the devil was pulling me this direction that I felt like I was in a breaking point to lose my mind. And I remember I sat on the bed and I said, I said, I don't know what your name is, Jesus. I don't care what this hallelujah rollers call you. I have no respect for, for Christianity. Matter of fact, Christianity is weak. They don't know how to fight spiritually. They don't have, they don't, they don't, they don't, they're spiritually anemic. They can't deal with me. They can't see me when I ask to project. They can't see me when I, when I ask to project to their home, when I turn into the shadows, when I go into the shadows of the demonic and I'm standing on their blind spot looking at them, but they can't see me in the witchcraft world. I was able to do that. And, and I felt like I was going to deep sleep. The deep sleep, I was passing away. And all I said was, if you're bigger than my daddy, you show me. And I end up leaving my body, end up in this train going straight to hell. I mean, nothing wow. on the earth this fast. It was going, I mean, so fast. And then on the train, there was people on the train. It was packed by Times Square, the train. And you could see the faces of the people. Their faces were blank. But you, there were people on the train. They were terrified, a terror on the train that you could cut it with a knife. And they knew they were going somewhere that they were not coming back. And then Jezebel, I have a contract with Je Jezebel. I had a contract with Jezebel, no more, praise the Lord. I had a contract with Jezebel. That, uh, there was two folds of Jezebel. She could turn into a water spirit and the demonic side, on the demonic ground of water spirit. She can, uh, her name is Achu on that, on that side of Santeria. She can turn into uh, uh, a demonic spirit. Her name is Anaisa in the Dominican Republic. She dressed all in, in a black wedding dress. And then in the spirit round, she dresses in a white wedding dress on this side uh, of the place that I had contract. And Jezebel was telling me on the train that I was a traitor. Why am I leaving? I didn't know why she was saying that. I, I, she was saying, actually, in a demonic tongue, by the way, because we did demonic tongue. You're the holy tongue. You lay holy hands. We, hate, we, we lay demonic hands. You, you, you uh, fell back, backwards in the spirit. We fell backwards in the demonic. So we copy everything you, you have. The only thing that we didn't have that you had was the presence of God. Come on. Amen. So that so leaving my body on this train, going to hell, crashing to hell, an explosion in hell. And this this is the this is this is the part that man, I mean, even to this day, it just shocks me that when I got into hell and the train exploded, I put my foot down on the ground in hell. And that turf in hell is not even in it's not even on the earth. It's it's a turf in hell that breathes like a person. It breathes like a person. When you step on it, you hear the breathing on it. And then the, the, the fear, the, the torment, fear in hell, is nothing. there's nothing on the earth that can compare to it. It wraps around you like a python. When it wraps around you, you think it's a person wraps, it's wrapped around you. It's so demonic that when it breathes, that's when the torment comes upon you. And then when it inhales, it releases you. And then it breathes again, the torment comes upon you. It paralyzes you, the torment. And I had, thing, I had that thing wrapped around me. And I was running. I saw a cousin of mine in hell that he's still alive on the earth. And the Lord told me later that he'll never make heaven. That's why he's in hell. And my aunt that passed away three weeks ago, uh, three months ago, one of my cousins that are, she go to Pagani's church. Uh, she actually went, went down to Florida to speak to Christ to my aunt. My aunt said, leave me alone. Respect my religion. I respect yours. She ended up in Hop Hopsis Hospital down in Tampa in Orlando. And this is the thing that happened to her. My, my cousin was supposed to go there on Tuesday to go speak to her three weeks ago. And she actually passed away without Christ. Wow. Because a week, I had that couple of days, two, 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 three days later, I had a, I'm not a dreamer. I had a dream. God showed me her in a coffin box. And God showed me her in a coffin box. And the Lord said to me, she's here to show you that she didn't make heaven. 
So she she's in a place of torment at this point in time. And there's no there's no redeeming a place of torment. It is a forever place. And I was as I went down to hell, the devil showed up and said, I loved you. I was you as my son. I adopted you at the age of eight. And he started to show me. He said, I adopted you. I loved you. I, I, I loved you. I gave you all the powers. I gave you secrets. I gave you ceremony. I gave you rituals. I gave you, I gave you a demonic anointing over your life. I gave you power, power with demons and principalities and territories and familiar spirits and unclean spirits. You have, you have all the contracts. There's no other ceremonies done in your body that I have. The, I gave permission to have them all done in your body. And I said, I don't know what I'm doing here. And he's talking to me in demonic tone. I said, I don't know what I'm doing here. Then when he went to grab me because he wanted to destroy me, the cross of Jesus Christ, the one in Calvary, the wooden cross showed up in hell. And it, and it was in between me and the devil. And when the devil made contact with it, the devil melted like he fell like a piece of paper. And I ran into the portals of hell. As I was running to the portals of hell, the, the, the torment and the, and, and, and the fear increased. So when I got to the other one, one I came out out of one of the tunnels and you hit the ground. But, the more I stepped in hell, you hit the ground, breathe like a person. And the fear just grips you. And you can't see the hand in front of your face because it's so bitch black down there. And I'm running to the tunnels trying to figure out if I can find a door or window, I can get out. And the devil showed up again. But this time he showed up with the horns and he showed up all, with his garments. And the devil's garments are filthy because he fell from grace. So his garments are stained. And so he showed up. He said, I have to kill you. You break my heart that I have to destroy you because you are going to leave me. And I have to destroy it because you're going to tell the world how I move into culture, how I do witchcraft, how you, I taught you witchcraft and I taught you all the secrets of the kingdom of darkness and you're going to expose it and you're going to weaken my kingdom. So I have to destroy you. You break my heart. And, and when he went to Graham again, the cross showed up again and destroyed. I mean, I'm talking about my brother, if you take a piece of paper and you roll it this, it falls on the floor, the cross demolished him. I went back into my body. And I said, I went back into money. It was like a lightning bolt. I went back into my body. And it, hit, it felt like I had electrical paddles on ICU hitting my chest. The lightning bolts, they came back when I came back into my body. And I knew that was my moment to turn, turn, turn from 25 years of devil worshiping wow. witchcraft to the highest level and follow Jesus Christ. And it's, it's, it's amazing how I can see the devil in my own eyes. And I follow a Jesus that i never seen in my life. And I heard the voice of God for the first time a week before I went to hell. The voice of God, he said to me, son, I'm coming soon. What do you want to do with yourself? And this is the thing about the voice of God. And the reason I knew that it was his voice, there's no voice like that in Come the kingdom on. of God. This, the voice thunders, but it has a peace and authority behind it. And I knew that he was talking to me. And a week later, he, put, he sent me to hell and brought me back. I went to hell as the highest and the highest level of the witchcraft world and came back as a believer. Come on. <laughs> and, 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 and from there on, it's just been a, a journey with the Lord for 22 years. And I, I, I think it's a surreal moment for my life. And the thing is, that in my first book, Out of the Devil's Cauldron, I, the, the devil dragged me into a dream that I stood with Jemaya. Jemaya is a demonic principality that rules the oceans and she came out it's the same symbolic symbol of starbucks if she came out the ocean she covered the ocean with her body and her crown and she sat on this is the last attempt the devil was trying to get me back and she sat on the on the top of the ocean having a conversation with me like we were old friends to invite me back to the occult and i told, i looked at her in, in my dream it was a it, i believed that i was out of my body and it took me to the ocean and I believe when I started talking to her, I said, I can't go back. I'm in love with Jesus Christ. I can't go back to this world. And then she disappears and I woke up and I kept following, still following Jesus into this day. Amen. Wow. So powerful. And guys, for those of you that are just jumping in, maybe it's your first time. We have over 5,000 watching right now on YouTube. John Ramirez is now a preacher. He's now traveling all over the world, <laughs> preaching the gospel. And this has been, how many years has it been since you've been preaching, you've been serving God and saved? 22. 22, 22. Years. so he was in he was in witchcraft for 25 years he's been preaching the gospel for 22 22 years and sharing about exposing witchcraft the dangers of witchcraft and the reason why we share all this and talk about his testimony is so that when he says these things about halloween these are not light things these are not him giving his opinion or what he thinks or his a suggestion these are things he actually lived now you said you got married 
on Halloween. Okay, so for those listening in the chat, John, they they push back and say, it's innocent, it's no big deal. Halloween is not spiritual. There's nothing spiritual about dressing my kids up, getting them candy. Can you talk to us a little bit about the spiritual sides of Halloween? And the reality is, is Halloween just this innocent thing where we could just dress our kids up? Or is there something spiritual in the occult world that has to do with Halloween and specifically spiritual activity on that night? It's not on, It's not only spiritual, but it's demonic. Mm. It's demonic because when you dress up the child, whatever costume you put on, you can dress them up like little Jesus. You can dress them up like little Noah. You can dress them up like little Isaac. You can dress them up like Casper the Friendly Ghost. You can dress them up like little Ariel from the mermaid movie, Marine Spirit. You, it is the identity Come on. of changing and shifting your child's DNA to a demonic DNA and giving the devil the legal rights of, of the opportunity to torment your child. And not only torment your child, you open doors to your child that later on in his teenage years, your child will either be homosexual, your daughter will be a, a person that be selling her body, or be a, a situation that your kids will be on drugs because one door opens the other. And 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 today we have we have we have people in church saying, well, I brought my kid to church. They grew up in church, but you celebrated something so despicable and so demonic. And it, 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 you engraft it in your child's DNA. You, you engraft the unclean spirits. Then now they're collecting and they, they want retribution against your child because now your child is it on drugs. And you say, but they grew up in church. Why are they on drugs? Well, the door you open. Well, why my daughter sleeping around? What the door you open because the demon brings they'll bring shame and guilt, they bring uh perversion, they bring lust over your child, and now your child is home watching pornography all day long because you open the door. It leads to unclean spirit to invade the not only invade your children from the crown of the head to the sole of the feet, complete and fully. Listen, the biggest day for me to do witchcraft was on Halloween in November 1st. I did it. I did it. It was the highest level of witchcraft during those two days. Within that 24 hours, I was up from six in the evening. I was up all the way past November 1st to past midnight doing witchcraft to people naked, painting my body with demonic colors and doing witchcraft and rituals on that day. So you can't tell me that that day is, is make-believe. Might be wow. make belief for you, but you'll pay the consequences later, and then you can come on the show and we'll cast out the devil for you. Come on. You're hearing it here from someone who's an ex warlock for 25 years. It's no joke. He got married, if you're just jumping on, on Halloween, did a dem demonic ceremony. A bunch of demons came to his wedding, and this was the night where everyone's doing rituals, everyone's doing seances, everyone's casting spells. If you think about it, Halloween, which some might say, what makes it different than other holidays? Halloween promotes witchcraft and magic. And what does the Bible say? Leviticus 20, 27. Anyone who practiced witchcraft, soothsaying, and sorcery should be killed. Deuteronomy 18, 9 through 13. And thank God we're not living in Leviticus anymore. Deuteronomy 18, 9 through 13 says, When you come in the land which your Lord God is giving you, you shall not learn the abominations of those nations. They shall not be found among you. Anyone who practices witchcraft or a soothsayer or one who interprets omens or a sorcerer or somebody that conjures spells or mediums or spiritists or even anyone that calls upon the dead, all these things, listen to this chat, those of you watching here, all these things are an abomination to the Lord. Ephesians 5.11, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose the works of darkness. So the text is saying, not only should we not associate with Halloween, demonic, witchcraft, magic spells, but we should expose these works. And the reality is, Halloween brings glory to Satan's kingdom. I mean, think about that. Halloween brings honor, it brings glory, it brings attention, and it brings praise to a kingdom that as Christians, we're saying, we're not supposed to be involved in. We're anti that. Jesus died to defeat the powers of the enemy, to bring us salvation. And here we are indulging in it, saying it's innocent. Now, there's parents say, well, brother John and Isaiah, I just don't want my kids to miss out. And my response to you is, yes, you do. You do want your kids to miss out on witchcraft. You do want your kids to miss out on, on magic. You do want your kids to w miss out on anxiety, on depression. The fear is if we don't allow our kids to do what the world does, they're going to miss out on what the world's doing. And we want that. 
The Bible says we're, we're not of this world. We're like pilgrims passing through. I don't want my kids to participate in the things of this world. The Bible says that when you go into the land I show you, don't conform to their rituals, their patterns. And then you say, well, that's Old Testament. In the New Testament, Romans says, don't be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So our job is to not partake in works of darkness, not partake in things that bring glory to 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 uh, the kingdom of darkness and not do things that the Bible commands us not to do. What about, what do you think about trunk or treat at the church event? What do you think you about know, churches? What, you know what? Well, <laughs> We're I'm going, going one there. Time, uh, one time, we're going to go there. But one time my friend, I had a friend, he was a Catholic and he said, I'm going to mass. I'm going to mass. He told me, you want to go on Good Friday? You want to go to mass with me on Good Friday? I said, I can't step into the church on Good Friday to celebrate what you celebrate. Wow. He said, I said, the devil will kill me if, if it were to catch me on, on some holy holiday that represent Christianity, the devil would destroy me. I said, I'm not allowed to walk into no church on a Good Friday or Resurrection Sunday as a devil worshiper because I, I will pay the ultimate price. Because the devil warned his kingdom and warned his people, if you step into a church on a Good Friday or Resurrection Sunday, you pay the penalty with your, with your, with your life. Wow. The, the devil say that to me. You don't cross over to that side because you belong to me. So why Christians belong to Jesus? You're Come crossing on. over to the devil's side. How 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 crazy. You know, Tonk and Treat, listen, this is what happens with Tonk and Treat. Listen, I wrote it down. The Lord showed me. There's two things the devil doesn't chase. On, 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 on a, Two things the devil don't chase. He don't chase religious people and religion. And when you, ce when you celebrate Halloween, you are a number of religious people. And you, you live on religion and you're a religious person. You don't have the Holy Spirit. You don't have the Holy Spirit. You don't have a relationship with God. You don't have any contact with Jesus Christ because if you did, you want to cheat on him on Halloween. So the, the churches today that are celebrating uh, harvest, you want harvest? Step out there and evangelize and get some souls. Come on. You know, a set of candy. <laughs> and then, then the, 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 you, you, you come into a place of being religious. God is not going to give you the anointing when you're sleeping with the enemy. God is not going to give you a calling and a purpose when you're sleeping with the devil. There's no way that God's going to validate something that is despicable, demonic. And my brother said that in the, in the Leviticus, you they would thank God we don't live in that age. But in the New Testament, you die spiritually. Mm. You die spiritually because the things that God gave you, now they compromise. The calling, the purpose, your destiny has been compromised by the devil. Now the devil owns spiritual real estate in your life because you open doors because you went to bed with the devil. If you go to bed with a prostitute, you end up getting A's. Wow. So when you, when you go to bed with the devil, you become religious. You have a religious spirit. You become religious. You go to religious church. There's no anointing. There's no Holy Spirit in you. That's my belief. Because you cannot celebrate something so demonic, so despicable. The children are missing. The children are being raped on Halloween. The children are being snatched on Halloween. The children are being sacrificed. Living, I mean, I'm talking about rituals of sacrifices. Put them in demonic altars and stick a knife in their chest and open them open for the, for the Halloween purposes. And now you come intertwined with that devil. You come intertwined with that. But you dress it up and you had a Hershey bar and you think that, uh, that the guy's going to honor that? No. You, you're unclean. You're unclean spiritually. You're contaminated spiritually. And the devil has a stronghold on you spiritually. So there's no way that you're going to tell me that that's a fun holiday. I think, you know, hearing it from you, I think one of the things is so many pastors, you know this, are not spiritual. They're thinking there's no big deal. I have pastors writing me like, well, I go take my kids trick-or-treating and they brag about, you know, how they go trick-or-treat and they dress their kids up and stuff. But the reality is you're not spiritual. Like I look at all of my friends that do deliverance, all my pastor friends that are in spiritual warfare, none of them celebrate Halloween. And then I look at all my pastor friends that don't do, they're not in the, in the spiritual realm, they're not doing deliverance, they're not laying hands on the sick, they don't believe in the spiritual side of Christianity, and all of them celebrate Halloween. And I'm thinking the difference is they're not spiritual. They don't see the spiritual implications that what you're doing is a spiritual act. Like if, if John Ramirez is here, was in ex warlock of 25 years and he's telling us live on the air right now to everybody watching, you know, 5,500 people, I used to do sacrifices. People are doing stuff we can't even mention on the live stream because we'll get our video taken down on Halloween. And then you have a bunch of Christians here saying, oh, it's no big deal to celebrate it when he's telling you this is a dark, dark demonic holiday that you don't want nothing to do with. You need to stay a thousand miles away from. And the, and the idea is you're like, well, I don't want my kids to miss out. 
Well, is, is it worth opening up the door to spirit, spirits? Is it worth opening yourself to darkness? Let me, John, I told John I was going to do this. Let me give a little bit of yeah. a history, if you don't mind, about Amen. Halloween. Okay, so let me Amen. say John gave us the spiritual side, what he's been going through. Let's look at what the History Channel. Now, there's a lot of debate on how Halloween started. This is the most solid information I could find that's been validated by the History Channel. They say, um, by the way, the pronunciation of this, it looks like Sam Hain, but it's Sawin. So this is how Halloween started. Sawin is a pagan religious festival originating from ancient Celtic spiritual tradition. In modern times, Samhain is usually celebrated October 31st to November 1st to welcome in the harvest and to usher in the dark half of the year, which John just talked about, how the last end of the year is the dark half of the year. Celebrants believe that the bear, listen to this, this is the origination of Halloween. Celebrants, this is from History Channel, believe that the barriers between the physical realm and the spiritual realm break down during Samhain, allowing more interaction between humans and the other world creatures. Ancient Celtics mark Samhain as the most significant of the four quarterly fire festivals, taking place at the midpoint between the fall equinox and the winter solstice. During this time of year, hearth fires and family homes were left to burn as the harvest was gathered. After the harvest was complete, celebrants joined the Druid priests, come on guys, listen to this, to light a community <laughs> fire using a will that would cause friction and spark flames. The will was considered a representation of the sun and used with prayers. Cattle were sacrificed, so animals were sacrificed, and they took flames from the communal bonfire back to their um, hearth, uh, their hearth. Early texts present Samhain as a mandatory celebration that lasted three days and three nights where the community was required to show themselves to the kings and chieftains. Failure to participate in this holiday was believed to result in punishment from the gods resulting in illness or death. There was also a military aspect in Ireland. Uh, because the Celtics believed the barrier between worlds was breachable during Samhain, they prepared offerings, sacrifices, and they left them outside of villages for the fairies. It was expected that ancestors might cross over. So spirits of your ancestors might cross over during Halloween. And the Celts would dress as animals. This is where dressing up started. They would dress as animals and monsters so that fairies were not tempted to kidnap them. So they thought these spirits, these fairies were going to show up and kidnap them. So they would dress like these, an these spirits as monsters or animals. Some specific monsters associated with the mythology surrounding Samhain, including a shape-shifting creature called Puka that receives harvest from the field. The Lady Gwyn is a headless woman dressed in a white dress who would chase people around that accompanied a black pig. The Dalahan sometimes appeared as impish creatures. These are demonic spirits looking things that headless men on horses were carrying their heads, which is where you get jack lanterns from. Riding flamed eyed horses, their appearance was a death omen to anyone that encountered them. So I hope you guys are seeing as I'm reading the history channel, these are all demonic witchcraft death seances. A group of hunters known as the fairy hosts might also hunt on Sawin and kidnap people, similar to the slog who would come from the west and enter houses and steal souls during Sawin. As the Middle Age progressed, so did the celebrations of the fire festival and bonfires. Um, this was near farms, they came, it came a tradition where they were protected from fairies and witches. Carved turnips called jack-o'-lanterns began to appear, attached by strings and sticks and embedded with coal, later the Irish would switch to pumpkins. In Wales, men tossed wood at each other and played violent games and set off fireworks in Northern England. Okay, the tradition of dumb supper began during this time where this is where candy came in and food came in. As Christi look at, Listen to this, John. As Christianity gained a foothold in the pagan communities, church leaders, look at this, church leaders attempted to reframe Samhain as a Christian celebration. The Pope Boniface in the 5th century moved the celebration to May 13th and sacrificed it and um, specified it as a day of celebrating the saints and the martyrs. The fire festivals of October and November did not end this decree. In the 9th century, Pope Gregory moved the celebration back to October 31st, I'm sorry, back to the October and declared November 1st All Souls Day. This was them trying to Christianize Halloween and that would, day would follow to November 2nd. Neither new holiday did away with the pagan rituals. October 31st first became known as Hollow's Eve or Halloween and contained many pagan rituals and practices. Again, this all this information is from a non-Christian source. So this is what the world says about Halloween. Trick-or-treating is said to have been derived from ancient Scottish practices in the nights leading to Samhain. In Ireland, the practice of putting on costumes and going door to door and singing songs to the dead. Cakes were given out as payments. Halloween pranks were a tradition of Samhain. Through ancient celebrations, tricks were um, typically blamed on demonic spirits or fairies. A broad revival of Samhain started in the, the 1980s with the growing popularity of Wicca. So the Wicca movement, which I'm going to be exposing next week, brought back these Halloween demonic rituals in the 1980s and traditions. 
I'm almost done here. The Wicca celebration of Samhain takes on many forms from traditional fire celebrations to modern Halloween to getting out candy, dressing up kids, and so on and so forth. Wiccans look at Samhain as the passing of the year and they incorporate common Wiccan practices into the celebration. In the Druid tradition, Samhain celebrates the dead with a festival on October 31st and usual feature of bonfire and communicating with the dead. American pagans! Man, this is so crazy american pagans hold music and dance celebrations called the witch's ball during Samhain. and then i have a whole history of trick-or-treating which i won't go into because it's too long all right so that is the story it, it, go ahead it's john all there. it's all there i mean it's in black and white <laughs> the devil is telling you this is what you're buying into this is what you're coming into this is the contract i put it in your face not just sign it just sign it how you sign it you celebrate it you signed a contract by celebrating. We are in contract with the cross, Jesus Christ. We Come celebrate on. Good Friday. That I celebrate Good Friday because I'm in contract. I'm in agreement. I, I, I God has purchased me. God has signed my adoption paper by the blood of Jesus Christ. I celebrate the resurrection because I'm in, I mean, I'm in, in one with Jesus. When we the devil is saying to you, I'm offering you these things. There's no light to it, nothing but darkness and rituals and practices and demonic activity. Come on in, join the party. And you and you still walk into the devil's den. And John, this is from the Secular History <laughs> Channel. Because people in the chat say, oh, this is just you crazy Christians. My wife, my husband doesn't believe it. I just read you an article just posted last or two weeks ago from the History Channel saying this is the start of Samhain, which is what we call Halloween, the Day of the Dead. And this is all not a Christian perspective. And all you hear is communicating with the dead, which the Bible prohibits worshiping the dead, doing festivals to spirits, communicating the barrier between the spirit realm being separated and loosed, and now you can kind of just go in and out of the spiritual realm. And here we have Christians, followers of Yahweh, of Jesus, saying, you brothers are legalistic. It's really not that big of a deal. Listen, it's clear as day. Christians have no part in Halloween. We should not be promoting it. We should not be doing it. Now, some of you might say, Brother Isaiah, can't we redeem Halloween and make it Christian? No. Here's why. Because the word redeem means to buy back. When the Bible says Christ has redeemed us, Christ has bought us back. We've been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. The spirit of disobedience that works in the sons of disobedience, we've gotten delivered into God's kingdom. God bought us back. God does not want to redeem pagan holidays. Redeeming means to buy something back. God is not trying to buy a pagan holiday back. God is not interested in redeeming something that the, that is the devil's holiday. So, like, you can't redeem, let me just give you a dramatic example. You can't redeem the Ouija board. You can't redeem um, New Age seances. You can't redeem the, uh, the, you can't redeem, you know, positive energy and yoga. People say, I'm just going to redeem yoga. Yoga's Hindu. It's demonic. Yeah. It's prayer stances to foreign gods. So we're not going to try to redeem and make Christian yoga. We're not making, you know, they try to redeem tarot cards. Now they have angel cards. It's still mm -hmm. demonic. Oh, God angel is not, boards. Angel boards. Yeah, angel boards. Angel boards. It's the same thing. It's unredeemable. So these are not things that God is interested in redeeming. These are not things that God is looking to turn around and use for his glory and use for his good. These are things that we should not partake in. As the book of Ephesians says, we should not partake. We should have no place. We should put on the armor of God and withstand and fight and come against these things. And, and the Bible says, expose these unfruitful works of darkness. So John, if you have any final thoughts on Halloween, and then I have a bunch of questions we're going to ask you that came in from the chat, came in from Instagram. We had over a thousand, and I read through every single one of them. So some of y'all asked some wild stuff. I spent over an hour today reading questions, and I picked some of the best ones here. But is there anything else you wanted to add before we well, kind of close I, the Halloween listen, chapter and I move think, in? I think, I think you put the IC on the cake. Now, if you want to still sleep with the devil and pay later, that's up to you. So let's go with the questions. Okay, let's do it here. Okay, someone says that I have Virgin Mary statues in my home and around my house. Are these open doors? And is there anything wrong with my Virgin Mary statues? Now, John, before you answer that, let me say, uh, talk to us a little bit about, you did this interview, you probably, I'm sure you remember it, it was very famous, millions and millions of views, where you went into this store where they sell a bunch of Catholic statues, a bunch of saints, and a bunch of idols. Um, maybe talk to us a little bit about that, these statues of Mary, statues of Peter. What, is, what did that mean to you when you were in the occult, and what do you think about yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, you know, it, it's, it, I remember that interview. I went I went to the store that I went. It's, it's crazy. BC, before Christ, I was shopping at store, 
and buy my demonic ingredients and buy statues and have demonic altars in my house to throw statues in it. Mary, I had, I had the, I had the hands, the five hands with the cut here. I had, I had, I had all these statues in my house. I like candles too, right? Because demons know how to get into statues, you know, because the statue came back from the Catholic and the slave movement when, when, uh, when, when the slaves were brought to America. And then they bought the ritual, they bought the voodoo in it. And so they practiced their practices and the, and the slave owners wanted to turn them into Catholic. They came into the church, they saw these statues and they worshiped the statue, but they're not worshiping the statue. The, sh- the statues had symbolic symbols of colors and, and things on them that remind them of the demons that they used to serve back in Africa. So, so, so you know, it's all intertwined with that. So when I went into the store, now I go into the store as a Christian. I go with the camera. I go with the camera. I go in there to expose everything. And this, this store that I walked into, they make $3 million a year in witchcraft. Wow. And it's owned by Jewish people, by the way. Wow. So I walked in there and, and, and I'm exposing every statue. I'm exposing the mural on the side of the witchcraft store. And then the guy that comes with the camera, he panics. He <laughs> panics. On. He said, well, should we be in here? I'm, 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 I don't know. I'm scared. The devil grabbed this guy in the store. He went back to Canada. He lost everything. Beat him down like no tomorrow. Wow. I mean, destroyed him, destroyed his ministry, destroyed everything. Because he, he walked in with fear. And I walked in there exposing everything down to... As a matter of fact, they, 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 I exposed everything completely. I think the, all the statues were there. All, this, all the altars were there. All, they had people lined up on, on the side of the wall. There were tarot card readers. I exposed them too. I mean, I had a, I, I mean, it was just a, the, the grace of God allowed me to go in there with the, with a big camera and exposing everything. And this is the, this is the house of Satan, the, 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 the botanica that makes $3 million a year. Wow. And they're selling. So uh, for many of them didn't see the video, John went into a store. He used to go buy his witchcraft items from, and you explained something that I've never heard before. That's so powerful is you guys in witchcraft would buy these statues of Mary, mm-hmm. of priests, Mary, of right? Jezebel, everything Joseph, you can think of. Joseph, Joseph. All these statues. And those statues became a contact point for demons to come through and invade the natural realm. So I think yep. in your video, you explain how demons need a contact point. So they need, they need like mm-hmm. basically a point of reference to be able to come into the natural realm or be able to do things in the natural realm. Same as like a Ouija board. The Ouija board is the reference point. It's the vehicle used to communicate with spirits. The, but for you... Platform. You were using these statues as a vehicle, mm-hmm. a platform, a door to invite demons in. So when people have these Buddha statues and Mary statues and Joseph statues and all these different idols in their house, you're saying these are open doors for demons to come in and to do whatever Walk they want. In. Walk them in because the demons are body spirit. They get into these statues and these statues become real lifelike. They look real lifelike. I have statues in my house, and if you look at them, you, they look like a, human, like a human person. Because once the demon get in, you do the ritual to the statue, and the demon gets in, the statue looks real lifelike. Like the movie Interview with a Vampire. I remember back to when I, before I became a Christian, I watched the movie Interview with a Vampire because I had a fatuation with Anne Rice in, in the Chronicles of, of uh, Interview with a Vampire. And, 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 and you could see that what the statues in the Interview with a Vampire they become lifelike because the demons get in. And once the demon get into these things, they become lifelike. And the demon needs a place, a position in your home, a, 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 a place in your home. So when you put the statue, the demon goes in the statue and it becomes lifelike. There's a stronghold in your house. Wow. And you had in your house a cauldron. You had a, a cauldron, cauldron in your living room. What, what, were you, what were you doing with that cauldron? What were you doing with that? I had human bones in my cauldron. I had human bones. I had, seven, I had dirt from nine cemeteries. In that cauldron represents death. So whatever cemetery I wanted to bury you in, I would take the cauldron. I would take I would take small coffin boxes, put you in. And if I wanted to deteriorate you, I I take the the, the I take the door. I open it up. I put the meat inside as the meat rot. I put your name, your personality, your character. I put your first name, last name as the meat rot. You rot inside, and you get an unnecessary operation. You die in the operating room. I had that stuff in my house. I had. I, I did my witchcraft for the highest level. I rented an apartment. My wife at the time when I was married in Halloween, we lived in this apartment. The lady that rented the apartment, just to make a long story short, she rented the apartment for us. She subleased it to us. Someone else owned it. Some Jamaican people came to the door to claim the apartment. And then they said, we're going to we're gonna destroy you with witchcraft. I said, I'm the son of the devil. You can't do nothing. Go check with my daddy. They, they, I did witchcraft to them. I did witchcraft to the lady. They they would they would destroy I, the devil told me they got beheaded. And then the lady that was supposed to come every month to collect the rent, I lived there for one year rent free. So you never came back. 
And then when I moved out, I saw a couple of days later collecting soda pop bottles because she had lost her mind to the witchcraft that I did to her. So wow. the witchcraft is, and I'm not, I'm not celebrating that. I'm just giving you a testimony. My stuff, if you get fabric on me, fabric, if you get fabric on me, you can email me and I'll take care of business because everything that I've did under the, under the name of Satan is under the blood of Jesus Christ. And I am been redeemed from the crown of my head, my soul, my feet. And I am now exposing the deeds of darkness and doing deliverance for people so they can be set free. And I tell you, there's no anything in darkness that you can you can take the devil. You can say, oh, it's a white witch. Oh, I'm, I'm a white witch. I practice good magic. It's the same devil in a different suit. There's no white witch. There's no good Come magic. On. There's no white magic. There's none of that stuff. That's just that's just a, a, a situation to draw you into the dark side. So when you wow. deepen up, they show you the true colors. Wow, that's heavy. You know, people are people. I posted a video about you recently on TikTok that went viral. A video about Jeffrey Dahmer saying that he was a Christian, that he was baptized, and people were so mad. They said, "How could guys who've done so many bad things before be saved?" And I thought. Did you know what Paul did? Paul was having Christians murdered and God uh -huh. saved him and used him to write two thirds of the New Testament. So if you're in the chat thinking, oh, he did these bad things, God can never use him or save him. You have not read your Bible. You do not know not, not that Paul all. was holding the garments of the men that were stoning Christians. And the Bible says Paul was dragging Christians out of their house. Like historically, Paul was having Christians murdered and look what God has done in his life. So those things are under the blood. Again, as John said, these are not to boast. These are to expose the works of darkness. These are not games. When you go watch Hocus Pocus, that new Disney movie, and you think, oh, it's innocent. Look at the cauldron. You don't realize people are actually really putting in real body parts in those cauldrons and doing spells. Mm -hmm. And this is a real thing. Okay, someone and said- I had the body parts. I had the body parts in my cauldron. My cauldron weighed 150 pounds. The cauldron that I had in my house, it weighed 150 pounds, worth full of demonic things in there, despicable demonic things in there that I used to practice to do witchcraft on Christians. Wow. And now you're a preacher of the gospel. That is now I'm a preacher of the gospel and I'm doing deliverance like my brother here. Come on. Because Come we, on. We, we, we fear we fear not. We fear Jesus Christ only. Amen. What a win for the kingdom of God. Somebody said, Hey, I'm new to the faith. Um, looks like they're probably coming out of the new age or the occult is palm reading demonic. What do you think about it now? John me and you hear these questions and say of course it's wrong But we have to also we have to remember There's a lot of new people getting saved through our ministries that are coming out of the occult mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. don't know John how many people I've talked to that that have wrote me saying I was in the occult and I watched the video you did with John Ramirez and his testimony brought me out of the occult. So I want to make sure that we're very sensitive to these new people that are mm -hmm. just coming Absolutely. out of new age, just coming out of. So mm -hmm. we, we might say like, oh, duh, like that's a dumb question. But really, it's not a dumb question because some of these no. new believers, they did palm reading. They were involved in it. Um, what are your thoughts on palm reading? Is this something you were involved in? Is this something Christians mm -hmm. should stay away from? What are your thoughts on that? Uh, of course. I mean, let, let's let's go to the Bible. So sat with the witch. Yep. And he got a reading. And what happened to Saul when he got the reading? He got a suicide spirit. He committed suicide. So anything mm -hmm. that had to do with tea leaf, uh, uh, crystals, anything that you have to do with water, uh, water readings, crystal, tea leaves, uh, palm reading, tarot cards, all that is demonic witchcraft. Listen, let me just break something down. When I did car reading, when I read car readings for people, and I'm just going to break it down to you, I have a familiar spirit right behind me talking to me. So I could tell, wow. tell you, take the card, break it in three. When you break the card in three, I'll give you a quick, 30 seconds, you break yeah. the country, past, present, and future. So I tell you your past because familiar spirit is telling me about your past. He's a monitoring spirit. He has monitored you. He drew you to the car reading. So he's monitoring you. He tell you everything. Now you're saying to me, oh my God, this guy never know me. This guy doesn't know me. This John Ramirez, right he knows everything about what happened to me. Now I, now I tell you, take the car in the middle, the bundle in the middle. The bundle in the middle represents your present. And now, so I start telling things in your present, things that have happened to you, your bad love, things that happened to you, your wife, your husband, your children. Your job, I start telling you all these negative, all this stuff that is negative happening in your life. And you you super impressed because you don't know me, but the demon that's talking to my ear knows you. Right? So now you're sitting with me, you're sitting in a place you should never sat on. Now I got legal rights. I got legal rights over you. So what I tell you is the third bundle of the card represents the future. The devil doesn't know the future. Jesus does. So that bundle, I start saying, Well, I, I think I see your wife leaving, I see your husband leaving, I see a car accident. I see you losing your job. I, I stopped putting fear in you. I stopped putting fear in you. So what happened was, what happened, what happened, you go, well, I say, I can fix this for you. I can do a spell. I can do a ceremony. I can do a cleansing for you. Uh, $5,000. 
to do these things so we can keep these things away. So you said, well, $5,000 is a lot of money. Let me think about it. So you got two weeks because if you don't come back in two weeks, all hell going to break loose. I put that fear devil on you. So you leave, right? Once you leave, you forget about everything, right? But the demon that was talking to me goes home with you. Wow. Now he goes home. He performed all these demonic things that I said on your future. So now you intertwine with the situation because you got he has legal rights. Portals and doors and gateways are open in the spirit realm. So now the demons start attacking, car accident, children are sick, losing, you're about to lose your job. Now you run back to me and say, oh, my God, the things you told me this happening now, what should I do? I said, well, listen, I told you $5,000 two weeks ago. Now it's $8,000. You know, wow. I can fix it. So so you give me the $8,000. You're desperate. You, you, you want your life to give you back to normal. Now you're desperate. You give me the $8,000. I call back the demon. Your life go back to normal for a season until I send them back again. Wow. Guys, are you listening to this? And some of you are like, it's just innocent. So he's saying you came to him for a card reading and there's a demon, a familiar spirit telling him all these things about you. And when you leave, he sends a demon with you. And this is why, and we've heard this over and over. A psychic told me I was going to get in a car accident in two weeks and I got in a car accident. Well, yeah. They sent the demon with you to get you in <laughs> yeah. a car accident. And exactly. these are real. And and like you said, it is it is all about money. It's all about, I had a, I had a lady say, I've spent over $30,000 at psychics, on mediums, on astrologers, on this, on that. And they kept saying $5,000 more, $5,000, $2,000, I'll solve this. And all they're doing, and you just proved it, is sending demons in and out of your life. Mm -hmm. Sending spirits mm -hmm. in and out of your life to torment you. So again, those of you coming out of the new age, or those of you like, it's just innocent, brother. It's just a little card reading at the mall. Uh, trust me, the demons could go to the mall. The demons could move wherever. It doesn't matter if you're at the mall or McDonald's. If you're going and getting your palms read, your cards read, these are opening you up to demonic spirits. Um, somebody said, what is the best way to interact with my family who is in the occult? And let me ask you a side question, John. How did your family treat you while you were in the occult? Now, I've heard... You may know this. I've talked to some of your cousins and family that go to Pagani's church that I've preached at uh -huh. before. And they told me we were deathly afraid of him when he was in the occult, when he was in witchcraft. And he walked in the room. Everybody took off and was afraid of you. What are some of your thoughts on navigating with family who's in the occult? Or what was your family treating you like when you were in the occult? Um, how could we go about like trying to talk to our family who's who's doing these things? Well, I, I think I think I think first of all, you pray for your family. Prayer works. And Come on. I think Works. I think the best thing you can do is just uh, in your prayer closet, you pray for them and let them have an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. I think that you, I think sometimes depend how deep they're in their cult because the deeper they are in the cult, the more the fear of being grafted in them to leave because they think they're going to die. Wow. So I think, I think what I do with your cult, I share more, I share a quick story. I have a, I have a niece. She's, a, she's into uh, homosexuality, my niece. And uh, the other day my mom told me, you know, my niece, uh, she, she backed up on her rent. She's backed up in her rent. Uh, she's backed up on, uh, and this is just me, my story. She backed up on her rent. She can pay her cell phone bill. She can pay her Kinesin bill, her light bill. She was lighting candles, and my mom was afraid that the candle would fall and turn the apartment on fire while she's sleeping. I took out money. I paid for her rent. I, pa I paid for her rent. I paid, I paid for her rent. I paid for her uh, her things. Got back to normal. Her car didn't need, needed brakes. Her car needed tires. I took care of that, too, because my mom gets on. She take my mom's errands. So I want my mom to feel that she was on a safe car. And this is this is my point. I'm, this is what I'm sharing. And this is my story. Your story could be different. My niece, she can't, she don't understand. Why, why will my uncle treat me so good if, if, if I'm, what I practice and how I live is contradicting to the Bible? Wow. Right? So, but now I find out my niece works as a janitor in one of the buildings cleaning, uh, one of the residential buildings where someone can, in, uh, up, up in the part of the Bronx. And now she, all she does now, she plays Christian music. Come on. So, oh, she's playing Christian music. So the other day she's cleaning the building, playing Christian music, right? Now, I mean, think about it. She, she's living a, a, a life out of God, but because I did good things for her, I loved on her. Now she's playing Christian music. A guy comes out of the apartment and says, oh, you, you like Christian music? Are you a Christian? She said, no, I'm not a Christian, but I love the Christian music. It touches my heart. They start to talk. And then the guy, she told, she, she told the guy, my uncle is a preacher. He said, who's your uncle? He said, my uncle is a preacher. And, and he said, who's your uncle? She said, my uncle's name is John Ramirez. She said, he said, oh, no way. That's not your uncle. That's, that can't be true. That's not your uncle. She said, yeah, that's my uncle, John Ramirez. He said, I follow him on YouTube. I follow him on Facebook. On. I follow him on Instagram. I read his book. How can he be your uncle? She said, let me prove it to you. She showed him a picture. God is doing something. 
So if mm. what you deposit, you don't have to come in agreement with the with the witchcraft. You just show them the love of Jesus and, and let, let the love of Jesus compel them. Doesn't mean that you're in, 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 in cahoots with the witchcraft. Doesn't mean you're in agreement with the witchcraft. I'm not in agreement with homosexuality or nobody. But, uh, but she's my niece. And I think that the greatest thing I can show anybody in my family that are in the, either in the occult or either homosexuality, I can show them the love of Jesus. And now my niece, before it was all worldly music, the worldly music went out the window. Now she listened to Christian music. Something is happening. God is doing something. So good. The devil has no defense to love. <laughs> There's no way he could fight love. Uh, love covers a multitude of sin. That's so strong. I love that testimony. Uh, somebody said again, I'm just an asking you questions people sent in. Do you speak Spanish? I would love to see some Spanish content. Do you speak Spanish? Hola. That's it, baby. <laughs> That's That's it. <laughs> Me too, man. <laughs> I speak Me Spanish too. to my mom. And I think she's the only one that can put up with it. Yeah, man. So, so that's a you're not. You guys will not be seeing any John Ramirez preaching in Spanish anytime I won't soon. Be singing, I won't be singing La Bamba to you. So don't there worry. There you about go. It. Hey, I'm the same way. My dad, my dad's gonna be like, I can't believe you're putting me out there. But my dad's 100 percent and doesn't speak Spanish. So, yeah, we didn't learn Spanish, but yeah, that's where that's at. Okay. And my daughter the same way. So it runs in the family. <laughs> that's so funny. Okay, somebody said, what was the biggest challenge that you had after you got saved and came out of the occult? What was the challenge you had, and how did the churches respond? Respond to you getting saved like when you got saved and decided i'm going to church i'm serving god what was the biggest challenge and how did the churches respond i, I, I think the biggest challenge was uh the biggest challenge was 30 days of witchcraft that came back to me mm. uh, i had to, had to sleep during the day to just to stay up at night because the tormentors and the demons would come to destroy me to kill me uh i would sleep i was lay in my bed i felt the footsteps of jezebel she come around my bed and i could feel her breathing on my neck and she's laying on bed you could feel the bed drop and no one there I could feel they were pulling my legs or sometimes they would try to pull the soul out of my body. And as they were pulling, I was pulling it back in because if they pull it out, I'll die in the spot. So there was 30 days of the highest levels of witchcraft done to me because they, the devil told them, kill him. Because if he don't, he's going to expose us. And after wow. 30 days, it stopped. And then I started to pray. And, say, and one day I, I've been at, I was asking God for quite a while, why you let them torment me? And, uh, and, and I told my the, the highest level, the, my room will go cold like an icebox out of nowhere. And they were there in the room to torment me. And I asked the Lord one day after 30 days to stop, I asked the Lord, why, why you let them torment me? God never answered. Then when I stopped asking, the Lord said, I wanted to see how much you love me and how much you trust me. They're not going to touch her ever again. Wow. And I'm, I'm even never laying a hand on me again. Wow. That's incredible. Wow. Powerful. Someone said, um, what do you think about people, which you shared a little bit about this, but we'll go back into this. What do you think about people who say they died or they had an out-of-body experience, saw hell, and came back to life or came back to their body? Well, you already shared your testimony on this earlier, um, but yeah, I guess you kind of already answered that earlier. But what are your thoughts on people that say, man, I died, and you know, there's thousands of stories of people dying, going to hell, then coming back to life on the operating table. Do you have any thoughts on that? Well, I think, I think depending on the end of the story, I mean, if people die, you know, uh, if people die and came back like me uh, and I received Jesus as my Lord and Savior, that's the proof that I'm here and Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. But if, if people say they died, they came back and uh, there's no there's no relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, I don't know. I got question marks in that, those kind of stories because I don't know if it was they want drugs. I don't know if they had an out about experience because they want, there was something uh, – they, they, they bought them that way, like like Megan, like whatever her name, Megan Fox did, yeah. you know, those kind of stories. I don't, those, they're mystical and they're mysterious and they don't have no Jesus behind them. So it, it, it's hard for me to swallow that pill. Yeah. But I think what you talked about earlier, your experience of your out of body experience going to hell and you said you've died and gone to hell and come back. I think uh -huh. it's absolutely biblical because Paul said uh -huh. he saw heaven oh, yeah. and he wouldn't uh -huh. speak of it. And so God can definitely, and I know you agree with me on this, but God can definitely show people hell, have like you had where you an experience where you saw hell and you had an out of body experience that led you to Jesus. Um, I've heard uh -huh. some really strong testimonies on this and I don't think it contradicts yeah, scripture. That's true. No, it doesn't contradict scripture. And it's a true story because I would not be, here. believe me, if I would have left the occult without That's Jesus, I would, I would not be here. I'd be dead. I'd be I'd be in some cemetery, maybe some Remy cemetery up in the Bronx Berry. I would not be here talking to my brother and ministering here. There's no way, no how, on the level that I was in the occult, I would be able to walk away. It's like the mafia. You can't walk away from the mafia because they say you come in one way, but you leave in a coffin box. You can't walk away from the mafia. You can't walk away from the devil and think that he's going to let you walk away and he's going to sing you a lullaby. 
Wow, so good. It was only by the grace of God. John says he's even alive right now. That's a, that's uh -huh. a word right there. Um, I'm sure you've gotten this one a lot, but this one was asked many times. I think I may have sold my soul to the devil. Is it too late for me? What do you think about John? All these people say, I sold my soul to the devil. I'm irredeemable. I can't be saved. You have people at your meetings tell you that. I have people at my meetings. I sold my soul. There's no way God can save me. What do you, what, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I, I think that you see God with your own eyes. You don't see God the way he sees you. I saw my, you couldn't get any higher. I spent a hundred thousand dollars of witchcraft ceremonies in my body uh, from marine spirits. Uh, we talk about shave my head, dressing white 365 plus seven days. I got the marks of the devil here in my body here carved into my flesh. And I saw myself, but God redeemed it. God can Come redeem on. anything. He sits on the circuit of the earth. He could redeem anything he wanted. He, he could take back the pen from the devil's hand and write your story. It's up to you. Right? But if you want to believe the lie of the devil, that you can't be redeemed. Yes, you could sell your soul. Yes, we know artists. We know we know all these people, um, Hollywood, musicians, even Christians sold their soul. I mean, you can't be singing uh, the lion. And the, you can't be singing that the lion and the lamb is going to bow down to the goat when you call yourself a believer. That doesn't work that way. You know, e either you're in, you're not. Either you're out or you're in. One or the other. You can't be in between because then you become a lukewarm Christian. I, I sold my soul to the devil completely and fully, 100% guarantee. And the Lord Jesus Christ walk into the devil then and redeem it. So God can Come redeem on. anything you want. There ain't nothing difficult for God to redeem. The devil has to bow down to the Lord Jesus Christ and give him what he wants. So good. So nobody is irredeemable. I think about Ezekiel is it eighteen four says, "Behold, all souls are mine. The soul of the Father, as well as the soul of the soul, Son, is mine. The soul who sins shall die." So God says, "All souls belong to me." So you're out here saying, "No, God can't redeem me. God can redeem you. The devil does not own your soul. God owns your soul, and God can redeem you like He's done me, like He's done John." So if you're out there listening to this, you asked that question on Instagram today. I sold my soul. You can be redeemed in Jesus' name. The devil is a liar he just wants you to think you can never be saved but you definitely can um somebody said and i think you i think somebody people have asked this before do you remember everything from when you were working for satan or some of your memory gone oh i remember everything like happened yesterday you can't forget how to ride a bike i'm not yeah. riding that bike anymore but i can't forget and those that sold you and if you sold your soul to the devil it's very simple say lord jesus i come today i repent for my sin you mean it from the heart you mean it from your heart confess it with your mouth and you will be saved and god would god will deal with your devils and all you have to say lord jesus i repent for my sins i repent from selling my soul i pray you come into my heart be my lord and savior and make me clean and put your holy spirit in me and i promise you that'd be the best decision you make ain't nothing no devil no hell no wisdom come no on facts, no Voodoo, no susa, no root work, or no no wizard be able to stop what God has started. That's what you have to say. That's how you redeem redeem back yourself by giving it to back to Him and say, "I give it back to you. Go get it, Lord. Bring it back, and God will bring it back." And the devil can't say nothing, and the devil can't do nothing about it. I promise you that because I'm here for 22 years, he can't do nothing about it. Come on. I love it, man. You fired me up. But just a couple more and then we'll we'll pray and we'll um, close it out here. Somebody said, how did you get into witchcraft in the first place? I think you shared that earlier, but maybe just touch a minute earlier. on the, that. The, yeah. necklace, the necklace that fell from the sky from the second heaven. Paul got recruited from the third heaven. I got recruited from the second heaven at seven wow. and a half years old. So, so that, that, that was the entry, the entry way, the portal, the gateway into the kingdom of God for 25 years. So you had the necklace fall seven years old. And also you were saying your family was involved in involved in, in it. So you were born. My father straight was into a warlock. It. Yeah. My father was a warlock. My father was a warlock. And I, I, then the first ceremony into the, into the demonic world was at age of eight. Wow. You were dedicated and you broke that generational curse in Jesus name. And man, and my daughter's Christian. My mom is Christian. My, mom was my mom's a Christian. She's a believer. My mom had two major surgeries at the age of 75. And, uh, and, and, and the doctor said, you, we're going to be honest with you. We don't think you're going to make one. So are you okay with that? My mom said, I read Isaiah. I'm cool. Let's go. Come on. Praise at the Lord. At 75 years old. My mom told him he read the book. She read the book of Isaiah before she came to surgery that morning. Come on, man. God has used you to break that generational curse off your bloodline. Amen. Praise the Lord. Somebody said, I think, did I ask you this? How did the church, how did the churches treat you? after you got saved what was it like going to church tell us quickly yeah. about that like you got oh, saved man. and you walk you know, in they're like who's this guy yeah. and they find out yeah. who you are i got demon possessed twice in the church choked the pastor twice came back the third the third time and uh it, you know i think the church is not it, 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 i felt like paul you know paul was not accepted right in the beginning they were afraid uh, of him 
that was afraid of him, that was afraid of me. Uh, I remember one time they uh, they invited me. It took a while before they invited me to go return some tuxedos. And I was on the band. I was the, we had this little Astro van, looked like we were crossing the border. Yeah. And uh, and I was like eight people in the van, and they were saying, "Hey." Uh, and I said this one quick thing. Hey, John, uh, you know, hallelujah. You like the pastor preach awesome. And I'm saying to myself in the back of the van, while we return to tuxedos, they should have, I'm sure they had a wedding the night before. Why did they invite me to the wedding? But why did wow. they invite me to return to tuxedos? Because I was not good enough to be invited to the wedding. So, so the church was right. The church in so many ways, they were very mean to me in the very beginning because they didn't take, I didn't get, a, I didn't get a fellowship, uh, I think over a year, year and a half, I got my first fellowship ever because they was they didn't trust me. They thought I was still uh, that was like a double agent or whatever. Wow! So they thought you're going to be coming up in your undercover trying to mess with our church, huh? and they weren't even inviting you to anything. No, you were just no, like second huh? class in the church. Yeah, I was sitting by myself, and uh, you know, Christianity was was very rough for me in, in my early years of of walking with God. And the one thing I share with you, even in, even. Uh, later in my years, the same people that embraced me in church years later, they betrayed me. They did a Ponzi scheme on me. I lost a house. I lost a car. I went wow. to bankruptcy. I went to all that. And I never left the table. I, I never left Jesus Christ because I had an encounter with Jesus Christ. I didn't have an encounter with church. Come on. I had Jesus Christ. And and all that stuff. And my brother called me up. My brother called me up. My brother did 15 years in jail. He said, listen, I, you, 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 you give me the permission. I go with my boys, beat these pastors down. And I drag them out of church and I beat them down. My brother's not even saved. I said, no. I said, God would take care of it. The other day, just to say the last thing, I was walked years later. I'm, in fact, my first book came out. I walked from 45th Street all the way to up the east side on the rain, 30 degree weather, in the rain because I made a few dollars to eat with the book I sold. And I was holding the money, the book I sold. And the box was cardboard box. I dragged it for 50 minutes in the pouring rain. When I got home, I said, I'm going to throw the box away, throw the books away because uh, the books are destroyed. The box is destroyed. When I open the box, the books are dry. God wow. kept my books, a books, and I can eat again. Come I didn't have no money. On. I had to join welfare. I had to get food stamps, and I was still preaching the gospel. I never quit. I never stopped. And years later, uh, I was, I was uh, a couple of weeks ago, a couple of like, two months ago. Three months ago, I was going to walk into a place to buy something in the pharmacy. And the Lord said, don't go buy today, buy tomorrow. Keep walking. I kept walking. And the person that crossed the street was three, three minutes later, someone was calling my name. Someone was calling my name. And I said, who's calling my name? And then the person crossed the street. And the person said, John, I want you to forgive me for the things I did to you. He was one of the people I lost a $520,000 house. And I tell you, you've been forgiven. You've been forgiven from day one. And he was a Christian. and He was a pastor. Wow, they straight up scammed you. Yeah, and 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 if I want, if I would, if I would not hear the voice of God, that's why it's so so important to know the voice of the Lord. If I would have went to the drugstore, I went into the pharmacy and bought my my stuff, I would have missed that divine appointment that God put my number one enemy in front of my face because He said, "Forgive me, John, for what I did to you years ago," and I said, "You've been forgiven a long time ago." Wow. And God has restored. And God has restored everything in my life because I know the gift of forgiveness is a gift, and I have forgive all those people that did me wrong. I ate pizza and Chinese food for three and a half years of my life, and still never left Psalms twenty three five the table. But they got prepared in the presence of my enemies, and I never left Jesus. I never disappointed Jesus. And two things will happen for me and my brother here: we, when we leave the battlefield, the hell will rejoice that we left the battlefield. And we will make Jesus Christ proud that he picked us. Come on. Whew, man, I feel the fire. I love it, man. I love it. Okay, let me ask you like one or two more here. Is uh -huh. it true that a lot of people high up in Hollywood are involved in witchcraft? What do you think about all these celebrities? Uh, yeah, yeah. Jennifer Lopez, Jennifer Lopez, Mark Anthony. Jay so it's not conspiracy. They're all involved no. in witchcraft. So why, 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 why would, why would uh, Beyonce say, I get, I get possessed by a spirit called Sasha? She named mm. her demonic mm. devil called Sasha because there have, to be a, uh, there have to be a connection in the culture the devil knows culture. He gives himself a name. He gives himself a birthday. The demon gives himself a name, a birthday, the colors he like. In order so you can connect, you have a point of reference to connect with that demon. Because in the reality, if that demon tells you I'm a demon, you have nothing in common with it. So he has to create something to make something to be a false reality, to be believable, to be true. So you can accept it and you make the contract with the demon.
So the demon made the contract for her because she said, when I get up on stage, it's no longer me. It's the demon because the demon possessed her because the demon, remember Satan, and this is my friend taught me, Satan in, 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 in Lucifer in heaven, he has something that the other demons didn't have. He had influence. Mm-hmm. And be, he had influence. So the influence he had, he was able to draw a third of the angels to fight with heaven because of influence. So the demon possessed this girl. She sings. She says she's no longer there. It's the spirit called Sasha. You can look it up on YouTube. And then she, the, the, what the people do? They raise their hand to force worship because she influenced the people to worship in a demonic way. And same thing, Mark Anthony. He's a, he's a witch doctor. Uh, Jennifer Lopez. Same thing. I knew the people in Jennifer Lopez that she used to hang out in Miami with for tarot cards. I knew who they were. Wow. Uh, all these people, they, they, they either one were uh, Cardi B, of our own mouth, what she's saying. I don't want to sing this devil stuff no more. I don't want to address this or anymore. The devil's tormenting me. You hear on YouTube crying. Yeah. Right? So, 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 so why, why would she do that if, 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 if the devil wasn't real? You know, K- Katy Perry, same thing. Luminati. Same thing. They, all, you, they have to make a contract. This is the name of the contract that they make. The name of the contract with the devil is called influence. Wow. If, if, you, if you sell your soul to me, I'll give you influence. Influence brings money and it brings power. That is a good point that Satan had influence in heaven and convinced the angels, one third of them, to rebel with him. I never even thought about that. Wow, the influence. And you know, now, you know, everyone wants to be an influencer. Everybody wants to be yeah, famous exactly. and a YouTuber uh-huh. and an influencer and uh-huh. influencer. Influence. When the devil's Make the one the that gives Make the devil the gives the influence. Yeah. You know, some people think this is all this conspiracy, but here's the thing. These people literally blatantly say it that this is what they're doing. They literally yeah. come out and say, oh, I invoke. There's one football player. You guys are going to laugh at me because I don't know anything about football. I don't know if it's Peyton Manning. Somebody always talks about how his wife's a witch. She does spells on him before the games. I don't know who he is. Who is he? Type it in the chat. He's like the most famous quarterback, and he's always bragging about I don't know nothing about football, so I'm, I'm totally, they're laughing at me here. But he's always bragging about his wife doing spells before the game. He says, yeah, she yep. does all these spells yep, yep, and yep, magic. Yep. And Tom Brady, Maddie, all right. I said Peyton Manning. Tom Brady. I don't even Tom, know who Peyton Manning is. Is he even Tom, a football player? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a football player, but he's another, he's the Tom Brady. Tom Brady. Public, he said his wife is a witch. She's, she's from Brazil. She's from Brazil. The capital of witchcraft. She's from Brazil. She does spells. She does shrines in the in the altar shrines with his name on it, his kids' picture on it. She 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 actually forced prophesy when he's gonna win the Super Bowl when he's not. All these all these things he's just putting out there on uh, on CNN. He's just I mean on CNN and uh, whatever a sports channel. He says it freely. He laughs about it. He jokes about it, but he doesn't know the price later he's gonna pay. His wow. wife is a witch. He's from Brazil. She's a Brazilian witch. She was a high, high-end model. She was an actress for a while. And now she practiced witchcraft so the husband can make the Benjamins. John, they're not even quiet about this. They're bold. <laughs> no. They're bold. You know, every time you share, you say, we were in demon church all night long, and you guys can't even be in church for an hour. We used to pray all night long, and you guys can't even pray. I look at the boldness some of these people have that are witches, warlocks, whatever, in the occult. There's so many different sects of the occult, and they're so bold about it. They're so, like, they're unapologetic. They're not up here going, sorry about it. They're on live television talking about spells, witchcraft. You look at what Disney's doing with their trans agenda and all their cartoons and little demon in FX studio and you know the antichrist and the devil all these cartoons are, are that they're making are demonic and then here you have little Christians we're so scared we're afraid of speaking up we might get canceled like I'm like cancel me who cares <laughs> I mean we're so soft in the church these days it's like if you talk about deliverance you're going to be labeled as a weird Christian I would rather be a weird Christian and biblical than a cool Christian and unbiblical like Man, we just got to be bold about this. Stop being afraid. We need to come out of the closet, out of the shadows, stop hiding and start speaking our faith out and stop being afraid of the devil's going to cancel us. Like, who cares if the culture and the devil cancels you? We need to speak out. Okay, last question I promise, John. I know it's late where you're at. I really appreciate your time. You know what's crazy? The homosexual homosexual community came out the closet and the church ran into the closet. Because back in the days when when I was growing up, People say I'm homosexual, but I'm still in the closet. People will say that. And and today the homosexuals in your face. I mean, I fly all the time. Ninety yep. percent of the flight attendant male are homosexual. They're in your face, and they they don't they don't have no shame, no guilt, and yep. they're not embarrassed to tell you they are. They flash it, they dress, they dress it, they walk like it. You see that spirit on them, and the church is timid. 
the church is fear. The church is, it's, it's, it's has, we have come to a place that you, you, you rather please the world, please people than please God. Mm. Let's be God chasers, not people pleasers in <laughs> Jesus name. Okay. Man. Last one. I know this one, there's probably a bunch of answers to this, but in your opinion, what is, and this came a lot. What is Satan's biggest weakness? What is Satan's biggest weakness? Prayer. Come on. Come on. I like Prayer. that answer. Prayer. Prayer. Listen, you, you don't have to belong to big churches. You got to know how to pray. There's two mm. different prayers. There's prayer that you talk to God and there's spiritual warfare press that the devil's intimidated by spiritual warfare press. The devil's intimidated by deliverance. The devil's intimidated about the fact that we've been with Jesus. Prayer brings you to Jesus. Prayer teaches you how to walk with Jesus. Prayer teaches you how to hear the Holy Spirit. If you're telling me that you have to fast, you tell me, well, I have to fast to hear the Holy Spirit, then I don't believe, I think you're a lukewarm Christian because I can be in Chick-fil-A and still hear the Holy Spirit. Come I on. need to fast to break witchcraft. I need to fast to break, to, to, to break the outer man, the flesh, because the devil is defeated, but the flesh is still alive. So I need to defeat that devil, the flesh, in order that the inner man can come out and be stronger than the outer man so I can have victory over my temptations. So, so the situation is prayer, prayer. God always looked for a praying man in the Bible, for a praying woman in the Bible. God always looked for praying. And listen, the days of Nehemiah, there was a, all any people God could have picked. Near, he could have come picked on. anyone in Jerusalem. Matter, matter of fact, Nehemiah never went to Jerusalem until he went to build the walls. He was he was in captivity. And God used a man of prayer, a man that was in anguish in prayer because of the ruins of, of Jerusalem. And he prayed, and God answered, and God used him. Gillian prayed. Daniel prayed. A man of prayer, a woman of prayer will shake the kingdom of darkness upside down. Come on, that's a perfect segue into, I'm gonna have you pray for us, but here's the funny thing. We're an hour and 30 minutes in and Facebook just started working right now. Can you believe that? An hour and a half in, Facebook is now working, but it's okay because we'll point everyone back to YouTube. We have 6,200 people, which is incredible on just YouTube. We probably lost like 2,000 people on Facebook here, but we have 6,100 people. Would you just pray for us? Pray a prayer of breakthrough, a prayer of courage. Man, this has such been a powerful live stream exposing the works of darkness. Um, pray that we would be bold. Pray that we would go out and do the work. Um, go ahead, feel free to whatever you feel. Go for it. And man, listen, you have to you look, listen, you can't be part of a church anymore. You have to be part of the remnant. Come on. The church age died. When COVID-19 came, the church age died. Now we're kingdom people. Kingdom people are part of the remnant that is that, that it's gonna usher the last harvest, the last it's gonna usher the last the presence of God, and it's gonna usher the triumph of, of wealth. It's going to usher those things in, into, into the earth realm. But you can't be a church person. Church people are religious. Church people, devil loves church people. Religious, and they, they carry religion. You carry religion, you carry religious. But you don't carry the anointing. You don't carry the presence of God. People that are remnant and carry the presence of God. Listen, I, I said this, that in Matthew 25, this chemical spiritual warfare takes place in Matthew 25. The virgins fall asleep. They all fall asleep. But the ones that got up, they still had oil in the lamp. Was the church fell asleep, but the remnant got up and still had oil in the lamp, and made it, and made it, and made it to the supper. So we, we, you need to know, understand, build your life, build your life, build your arsenal, build your prayer life, build your talking to God, make it a lifestyle, make it, be mindful of the Lord Jesus Christ throughout the day, be mindful, talk to Him, let, wait on Him. You know the prophets of old when they went into the prayer closet, they didn't talk. They said, "Speak, Lord." It's a speak, Lord. I think that when you come to your prayer closet, maybe you need to be silent and let us speak, Lord. Let them speak. It's one word from heaven will transform your life or bring you to the next season. So I just want to pray that, that when you get into your prayer closet, you let God speak. Mm. Speak to me, Lord, and transform me. And Lord, that every hindrance and delay and blockages in your life today will be destroyed completely Man. and fully. And every voice, every demonic activity from Halloween, from any demonic despicable practices, no matter how small you think they were or how innocent you think they were, the devil is behind it. The devil introduced innocent. He introduced you lifestyles. He introduced you culture. He introduced you compromising spirits. To, so he will, you will entertain these things and you will draw them into your life and make it a lifestyle. Father, I break mixture. I break, yes. I break mystical fires upon my brothers and sisters. Anything mystical in their life, mystical fire, myth, mixture. I break it, compromising devils. I break it off you. I pray, Father God, that you would take my brothers and sisters from the crown of their head and set them on fire. Lord, you, you said to me that you will never pour 
never pour wines, new wine into old skin because not only the wine will spill and be wasted, but the, the, the old skin will bust. Make them new wine skin. There will be reservoirs to hold your presence. There will be reservoirs to walk in your presence in your anointing of the Holy Spirit. They will know the voice of the Holy Spirit for themselves, Father God. They don't need to look for a prophet. They will know the voice of the Holy Spirit for themselves. Father, I release the anointing upon them. I release the presence of God. And every yoke, every pattern of cycles or repeat, let it be destroyed. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, so powerful. John, tell us a little bit about your e-course, Unmasking the Devil, that you just launched. Listen, if you guys are serious about going to the next level, training yourself up, you guys have no problem going out there to college for four years, getting a degree you're never going to use, yet you <laughs> struggle to do some of these lessons on the e-course. So tell us a little bit about the e-course you've put out. I've linked it in the comments and the description. Nobody get off the broadcast. There's 6,100 people. Stay put. We're not done. Stay on the broadcast. Tell us a little bit about that, John, and I have it linked I, there for I, them I, as I, well. I, and man, the e-course is, is a spiritual warfare, eight weeks a lesson, different than my other e-courses for October, November, and December. We 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 have a we have a mindset, a worthy mindset that we think the year have to change, but you have to change, not the year. And it, to break patterns and cycles. So when you finish in December, you finish a strong year in Christ. You can go into a new season because you completed what God told you to start. You can't go to heaven with incompletes. You, you know, one thing I share, the last thing I share with you, a lot of people in the Bible said, Jesus said, depart from me. I never knew you. And, mm. and, and they, they said this. This is what they said. They said, we cast out demons. We did. We prophesy in your name. Jesus said, I was not interested in the gifts. I was interested in you bear fruit. Wow. And, 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 and I think that we come to a place that we think the gifts is bearing fruit. Just because you cast out demons, you prophesy. Jesus told them, I never knew you depart from me because Jesus is looking for a remnant of people that bear fruit. And for, for, for the for the time he's giving you on the earth. And the devil's after your fruit. He's after your fruit because the devil knows that if you look like a fig tree, you'll be cursed and thrown into the fire. So mm -hmm. so we, the spiritual warfare that I teach all the believers is to bear fruit, to be strong in the month of October, November, and December, to have a strong year. You might have started weak throughout the year, but you ended up strong. It's not where you start, it's what you want to finish. And this is the patterns and cycles on your life, in your life, your walk, and your purpose, your destiny of being compromised, how you break them, how you destroy them, how you uproot them out of your life, how you become more than a conqueror in your life. Because when you conquer something, it will never come back and fight you again. And that's what I teach. Conquer. So the same devil, the same fire won't come back six months later and have you watching pornography again because you thought you beat them six, you thought you beat them, you thought you conquer them six months ago. It's not winning the battle anymore, winning the war. It's not, it's, it is conquering. So the devil won't fight you again another day. So good. So check out the e-course, guys. It's linked in the comments and the description. John, is there anywhere else they can find you? Um, uh, anything else that you wanted to plug before we get you off here? No, I'm good, man. Just the e-course, take it, man. Run with it. Make it your own. Take, listen, if you can even take a group of people in your home and you all be trained under that same e-course. Don't want to have to buy it. Everybody don't have to buy an individual. You can do a group study in your home with the e-course. You can do it with your family. You can do it with your church. Man, you know, release this to the atmosphere because if you can conquer the atmosphere, you can conquer the devil that's trying to kill, steal, and destroy you. So good. John, thank you so much for being on once again Amen. tonight. I'll text you thank after you. the broadcast. Thank you so much, brother. All right. Love All you, right, my God brother. God bless you. Love you too, man. Right. God bless. All right, guys, another amazing time with John Ramirez. We did have technical difficulties. Facebook did not work the entire time until the last literally 10 minutes. If you're on Facebook, you can go ahead and check it out on YouTube, the full video. I want to challenge everybody to give into the broadcast. I know my brother John always doesn't let me give him anything, but I want to sow into something. I want to bless him tonight. So you can give down below. As we always say, don't dine and dash. This broadcast was free. Maybe you say, Isaiah, I can't afford to give. Then guess what? Don't give, okay? If you can't afford it, don't feel bad. But if you have the extra finances, if you want to support what we're doing, we have had our biggest month ever. We've done over 30 million views in the last 30 days. So this has been amazing what God is doing. There's a lot of fruit in this ministry. God is reaching people through this ministry. So if you want to be a part of the ministry, you can monthly partner by scanning the QR code and you do get 70 sermons, 25% off the merch store. And you get invited to this Thursday night's partners call, which by the way, tomorrow I'll send partners call invites. So if you partner tonight monthly on YouTube members or 
the QR code website. You will get invited to this Thursday's partners call. Thank you for that, those that are giving. Listen, there's 6,000 people still on and 3,900 likes, which is still huge. But do me a favor on YouTube and hit that like button. That's going to help us out tremendously. Make sure that you hit that like button. That does help us out a lot. Maybe you're watching on a laptop. You can just go ahead and click the like button right there. Maybe you're watching from a phone. You can just go ahead and tap the like button. It's right there. Don't be scared. Maybe it's there. Maybe it's there. Not sure where. It's somewhere on your screen. Go ahead and tap the like button. That's going to help us out tremendously. What an amazing time tonight with John Ramirez talked about the historical Halloween, spiritual side of Halloween, his testimony, and we did q and I mean, you guys got a four-part podcast tonight with John Ramirez. We have a lot of us exciting guests that we are lining up. So, so good tonight. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you guys uh, for being here, for sharing. Unfortunately, Facebook did not work. I don't know what... It says I've been live for 30 hours on Facebook, so I don't know what's going on on Facebook. I'm live now on Facebook, and again, it took an hour and a half for my Facebook stream to start. If you're on Facebook... Make sure that you jump to YouTube. It's pinned in the comments and you watch the full video on YouTube. Uh, we did an awesome tonight. We had 6,200 people we peaked on just YouTube, which is incredible. I think we would have probably hit over 8,000 if we were on uh, Facebook as well. Because uh, last night we had 1,000 on Facebook, which is, is huge for us for Facebook. So you can check that out there. I'll also be with John Ramirez in Atlanta in November. We're going to be preaching on Saturday night together, tag teaming it up. So you don't want to miss that. Okay, yeah, it says I've been live for 30 hours on Facebook. I don't know what is going on there. Bummed I missed it. Facebook. Oh, Jenny's wasn't working either. Okay, so it's Facebook server. It wasn't just me. All the Facebooks weren't working tonight, so I'm glad it wasn't just me. I thought it was the Facebook server because it said we were live when we weren't. But anyways, Facebook's having issues. Glad that we were able to get on YouTube. Uh, go ahead and give, guys. The links to give are in the comments, and they are in the description. I know I need a haircut. I'm getting a haircut tomorrow, y'all. Actually, no, I'm getting a haircut on Thursday. I'm looking like a Chia Pet over here. All right, everybody said God bless. Great night tonight. Thank you, guys. Someone said only 30 hours. Yeah, it says I've been live for 30 hours. I think that's just a bug on Facebook. Those of you giving, thank you. I'll wait for some of you to give, and then I'll read all the donations. You can also give on Venmo, at Isaiah Saldivar. You can give on the website. Uh, no, I'm not growing out my curls. Okay, I'm over here not shaved. Hadn't shaved today. Hair's growing out. What is going on over here? We got John the Baptist, Isaiah Saldivar. I got the John the Baptist look tonight. But you can give on Zelle, Isaiah Luke Saldivar at yahoo.com. You can give on PayPal. You can give on Venmo. You can give on the website, however you want to give. Thank you. Again, if you can't afford to give, that's totally cool. That's cool. No worries. It's uh, free content, but we do appreciate those of you that are giving. Someone said, what? You don't look like a chip head. You look like you just got a haircut. Listen. I get a razor fade. So for me, I get a haircut every week. This is long. This is like the longest my hair has been in a long time. So yeah, I know for you, you're like, it looks like you just got a haircut. Mm, not for me. Not for me. I'm used to getting a haircut every week. I want to see your curls. I'm not showing that picture tonight. Oh, well, maybe I will. I guess I could. There's 5,000 of you on. I'll show you a picture of me 12 years old with curly hair. Okay. I don't care. Who cares? I used to be all embarrassed, but listen, I was 12 years old. So don't judge me. All right. Don't judge me. Where's the picture at? Do I have it here? Oh, maybe I don't have the picture. I'm sure my wife, if she's watching this, she'll be quick to send me it. Because every time I, you guys ask me to show... Oh, here it is. I got it. This is your boy with Jerry Curls, all right? I don't know. Maybe it's going to be too bright to show you this. Let's see. This is your boy right here. Curly hair, Jerry Curls, emo Isaiah. 12 years old. There I am, young Isaiah. With the Jerry Curl, with the gel and everything. That is why I don't grow my hair out. Look at my emo shirt. I was 12, by the way, all right? So don't judge me. There you go. I have an afro. If I if my hair wasn't jerry curled wet, I would have had an afro. But, you know, had to put the gel and the water and all that on it. You know what I'm saying? Know what I'm saying? Because, you know, I didn't want to... I wasn't rocking... I wasn't... No, let's see. If you have an afro, that's awesome. But I wasn't trying to rock the afro. I wasn't trying to rock the afro. But, yeah. I definitely... If I grew my hair out, my hair is thick. Thick. Looks like easy E, 12 year old looking 16. I was 12 in that picture. You look older than 12. Hey, look, it was the long hair made me look old. All right, don't be making fun, y'all. Let me see you at 12 years old. All right, let me see you, what you looked like at 12. Before Christ, yeah, I was definitely not, a, not well, I don't know. I was definitely not serving God, let's just say that. You had me rolling with a Peyton Manning. Y'all know I don't know football. Y'all know that I don't know nothing about football. I don't know the difference between a field goal and a... I don't even know. I don't know anything about football. It's like, man, go run, you know, run to home base It's as a football game's playing. I just, I have no clue. Yeah, I was like, Peyton Manning, that was the only football player I could think of the name. I couldn't name three players. <laughs> Peyton.
Peyton Manning. <laughs> oh, man. I just threw a Hail Mary on that one. I don't know. I don't know what's going on, Peyton Manning. And y'all were quick to Tom Brady. My dad even texted me. Thanks, dad. My dad's like Tom Brady. That's funny. That is funny. Poor Peyton Manning. He's, he's probably watching the stream. He's like, what are you talking about? Which, by the way, Andrew Tate. If you don't know who he is, you don't need to look him up. Andrew Tate posted one of my videos on his Getter profile, and I just look, I posted a video about that today. So go check that out. I posted it today at noon. Uh, yeah, whoever thought Andrew Tate would upload one of my videos. It's so weird. But I basically disproved Islam in that video. So you can go check that out. All right, let's read these donations. Those of you donating, thank you. Uh, don't dine and dash. Don't be stingy. So into the ministry. We had 6,000 people, and so far, I'm not, I'm not trying to shame you guys. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15 people I've given on PayPal. I don't know about Venmo yet or Zelle or my website, but out of 6,000 people watching, so far 15 people have given. So for those of you that are like, Isaiah's raking it in, everybody donates, uh, it's less than 1%. What is 1% of 6,000? 600? Yeah, 1% of 6,000 is 600, right? 1%? No, that's 10%. All right, wait, wait, what's 1%? What's 1% of 6,000? Yeah, no, no, that's six, That's 60, 60. 1% of 6,000 is 60, okay? Not 600, 600 is 10%. I know math. I know math. What are you guys talking about? I don't know math. 60. Okay, so le so far 15 people have given on PayPal out of 6,000. So for those of you that are like, oh, everyone, no, it's less than 1%. We're at like 0.2% tonight. Okay, Adrian, Sergio. Say, God bless you in the ministry. God started with you. May God continue to move your ministry to new dimensions of the spirit and continue to use your channel to propagate the gospel globally. Thank you, Adrian, for that well thought out comment. Melissa. All right, guys, I know. I'm sorry. That was 10%. All right. I was off on my math a little bit. It's late. It's had a long day. Melissa said, thank you, Isaiah and John, for what you do. God bless you and your families. And then got your prayer request there. When John said they went to a place of torment, is that purgatory? I'm not sure what you mean by that. I think he was talking about hell, Melissa, and his out-of-body experience. Maxim, there is no purgatory, according to the Bible. Maxim said, I love John Ramirez so much. Thank you for blessing us tonight with the great stream. Thank you, Maxim. Jeremy Split said, thank you guys, that was fire. God bless you guys and John. By the way, shout out to all the breakers in the chat. Thank you, Jeremy, and shout out to the breakers. Uh, the breakers are Pastor Mike Signorelli. Am I correct on that? I am pretty sure I am. Thank you guys for joining the broadcast. Thank you, Pastor Mike Signorelli, if you're on here. I love you and appreciate you. I want to call everybody out, but the comments move really, really fast. Sometimes I miss it. Whitney Nyland, thank you so much. Lucas, thank you. Warren and Donna said, so good. Love you, Brother John Ramirez. Thank you, Warren and Donna. Maritza Ramirez said, may the Lord continue to bless you. Thank you, Maritza. The Davis family said, thank you for you to continue to be faithful in what you both have been called to do. Don, Jade, and Jackie Davis. Thank you, Davis family. By the way, guys, we have a deliverance documentary coming out in 2,000 theaters in January. The same people that are putting out The Chosen in theaters are putting out the deliverance documentary that we're going to be in. So that's a very amazing. Fathom is putting out 2,000 theaters, and the company has asked us to stream in after the movie's over, the Deliverance documentary, stream into 2,000 theaters and do mass deliverance. And how amazing is that? So yeah, I'll put more info. I'll post the trailer to the documentary on my channel. And when tickets go on sale, which I think they're going to go on sale, I think in November, I will post the link to get your tickets to the theater. Every 50, all 50 states will have a theater. So movie night is going to be Deliverance uh, documentary coming out in theaters in January. Yes, East Coast, every state. It'll be in all 50 states in theaters and secular theaters we're gonna be doing mass deliverance come on holy ghost praise the lord i'm just you know all the religious people are mad right now manifesting no yeah it's coming out in theaters we're gonna cast demons out in the theater ride soul so such a powerful night so happy you and john on the stream so powerful when you guys stream together thank you for the faithfulness uh you're a legend i truly love you thank you raid and guys if you're not a monthly partner pray about becoming one there's four thousand of you on still talk to your husband talk to your wife Hey, we want to sow into this ministry every month. It's good ground to sow into. Invest into it. You invest into Netflix. You invest into YouTube Premium. You invest into Hulu, Disney Plus. You do monthly to all these things. Pray about becoming a monthly partner or doing a monthly membership on YouTube or whatever. It keeps us going and we appreciate it. All right. Anonymous. Let me know when you come back to San, Anto uh, San Antonio. I know of a good carne asada tacos in town. I got you. Thank you, Anonymous. I don't know how I would tell you because I don't know you because you're Anonymous. David. Is Bob Larson coming in Atlanta? I'm not sure, David. I'm not sure if Bob Larson will be there, but thank you for that donation. Lucy Ramirez, to keep preaching the truth. Thank you, Lucy. Plenty of grace. And bless you with a haircut. Great live stream tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Plenty of grace. Tracy said, I cannot thank you enough for being obedient to the call of God. My life will never be the same because things I've learned from God through you. The Lord led me to your ministry and his gratitude beyond words. Thank you so much, Tracy, for the donation. And I love and appreciate you. Yes, the breakers are Pastor Mike. Thank you, guys. You guys are awesome. Thank you, Pastor Mike, and all of you guys. 
Uh, Binkies in June. So we appreciate all that you and John Ramirez do for the kingdom. Keep spreading the Holy Ghost fire. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Binkies in June. Cece, thank you. Brandy Dix Dickinson. So thanks for your time and your ministry. Thank you, Brandy. Albert, so love your videos. God bless all you do. Thank you, Albert. Freddie and Priscilla, you guys are always donating so generously. Thank you so much. Freddie and Priscilla said, great exposure tonight. Amen. Love the testimony of John Ramirez. We'll share this message again and again. There are too many churches partaking in trunk or treat. Be blessed with this offering. Great stream. Thank you, Freddie and Priscilla. Again, I can't say it enough, Freddie and Priscilla. Have I met you or when can I meet you? Thank you. The e-course is in the description and in the comments. The Victors. Thank you for tonight. I get paid tomorrow. Love you. Listen, the girls and family. Victor family, we love you and appreciate you. Love the Victors. Shauna Rose said, thanks for the message. Thank you, Shauna. Anonymous, thank you. Also, make sure you're subscribed to the second channel. If you're not subscribed to the second channel while you're all here and there's a big crowd, let me make sure that I get you guys to the second channel. We have a lot of great content there. A digestible clips on the second channel. Where do I find the second channel link? Okay, I'll find it here. Please, please, please. Here's the link. Make sure that you go sub to the second channel. Mods, if you would be so kind and so gracious to go ahead and link the second channel, that would be amazing. Thank you, mods. Go ahead and spam the second channel in the comments. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Also, I will be preaching this Sunday, the day before Halloween, at my home church, four services. We're going to be talking deliverance and spiritual warfare. And then on Monday, we'll be live Halloween night doing Exposing Colts Part 2. I, I, I was funny because I was just live last night and I said, I'm doing the much anticipated Exposing Cults Part 2. And I was like, wait a minute, I'm the only one anticipating it. You know, I just like, you know, so it sounds better to say the much anticipated Exposing Cults Part 2. Type 1 if you've been anticipating Part 2, okay? So I don't feel so bad that I'm the only one anticipating my stream. All right. <laughs> let me read some. Oh, let me read the Venmo. Let me read the Venmo. Let me read the Venmo. Here we go. Thank you for those of you that gave on Venmo. You are truly legends, legendary. Oh, we did a, we did get a lot of um, through Venmo tonight. A lot of you did give through Venmo tonight. Thank you. All right, Matthew Kelly. Thank you, Brittany Schomburg. Say God bless. Thank you, Brittany. Josh Williams. Say great broadcast tonight. When do you think you'll have Wellington Boone on again? Soon. Wellington Boone was at my house recently. He came down and visited. Caroline Mojica. Blessed by John Ramirez's testimony. He's amazing. God bless him. God bless you and your family. Thank you. Flora Garcia, thank you. Mia Jameson, thank you so much. Andrea Ellis, so thank you for obeying God and doing his work. God's using your ministry to change lives. Guadalupe Gill, said so God bless you. Thank you so much. Christian Johnston, thank you. Christy Harris, thank you. He said keep giving the devil a black eye. Joanne Sanchez, said for the kingdom, we love you guys. Thank you so much, Joanne. Joey LaVey. Uh, let's see. My wife tried dr diving headfirst into Satanism before we got saved. She ordered a Satanic Bible and never got delivered. All glory to God. See you at Fresh Start. Thank you, Joey. Elizabeth Vega. Some many blessings to you and your family. Hope to see you in Georgia. Alexia Wambu. Uh, thank you. Excuse me, guys. Whew. Christopher Smith. The online ministry is always a blessing. Thank you. Tammy Chapel. Thank you so much. Camilla Owens. Thank you so much. Sloan. Thank you. Oh, man. Come on, Venmo. Caleb Russell, thank you so much. The Venmo's having issues here. All right, let's see if I can get this. I lost my place because the Venmo decided to mess up. Okay. Claire Busser, thank you so much. Thanks for all you do, letting the Holy Spirit guide you and rising up the remnant. Thank you to John Ramirez as well. I saw the original video when he went into the store a few years back. Changed my life. Crystal Gallo, thank you. Ginger, thank you. Rachel McKee, Mackey, thank you. Kim Fisher, the Kingdom Ministry. Thank you, Kim. Jose Gonzalez, said, may the Lord continue to bless you. Thank you, Jose. Amy Perez said, thank you. The mill was a blessing. Lindsay Le Leanne, can't wait to hear you preach again Sunday in Stockton. God bless you. Thank you, Lindsay. Dana Sisbaro said, thanks for having John on. How sobering and encouraging. God bless you both. Thank you. Shane DeMont, devil exposed. Keep shining the light. Thank you, Erica Flores. David Robbins, thank you. Brian Detweiler, thank you. Alba Torres said, God bless you and family. Thank you, Alba. Tiara Gosselin, thank you so much. Abby Groves. Thanks for helping me grow. Look forward to every time you're live. Tonight was awesome. Thank you, Abby Groves. Gary Ch Ch Chadez, thank you. So Halloween Exposed episode. Thanks for the great message. And I got your prayer request. Yvette Shoker, thank you. So this was for John Mayer's blessed tonight. Kim Rush, thank you. And Carissa McCarty, thank you so much. You guys are so amazing. Lots of coming in on Venmo. Fun Buns Hornick, thank you so much. Luz Enriquez, thank you. Junior I Ibanez, thank you. Cami White. Uh... Tina Schaefer, thank you. Natalie LaPera, said, see you in Georgia, brother. I can't wait. It's going to be powerful. 
Everybody's going to Georgia. It's going to be crazy. I'll be there with all my family the entire time. And we're going to be doing Q&As throughout the day. I'm excited for those. I love Q&A. If you didn't know, Q&A is my favorite thing to do. Just W, thank you. Okay. Do you need to pay for Sunday morning's event? No. Sunday is free 99. Just show up. 8, 15, 9, 30, 11, and 12, 30. We'll be on Partners Call Thursday. Awesome, Freddie. Thank you. Okay, I'm reading all the chat now. Do you have Cash App? No, I was banned for no reason. They literally told me there's no reason, but they just banned me. Uh, thank you, Isaiah Christian Rap. Uh, do I Christian Rap? No. Maybe someday. I got your prayer request, Christy, for your daughter. Hey, brother, did my PayPal go through? Thank you, Lorraine M. So thanks, Isaiah, bringing this type of content. God bless you. I don't know if your PayPal went through because if you gave on PayPal.me, I can't see it till later. The only PayPal I can see right now is the one that's in the comments of the stream elements. I can't see the PayPal.me till after the stream. Okay. What's the name of your church life song in Stockton? Is TJ coming to Georgia? I'm not sure. Is Georgia event going to be streamed? I'm not sure. Do you have any merch you're selling? No, I don't have any merch in person. You got to buy it online. Can you preach at my church? I'm not taking any dates right now. Yes, guys, our stuff is taking off right now. We've gotten 30 million views this month. So praise the Lord for that. Pray we keep growing. But yes, make sure you subscribe to the second channel. Okay. Do you know soccer? No, I don't. I don't really know anything about sports. <laughs> I know a little bit because I played softball. I, you know, I know golf. Is golf even considered a sport? I golf. I played some basketball. I know some, but like football and stuff. I, I don't know. I don't know anyone's names or anything. You know what I mean? I'm not dumb. Like I know about sports. I just, you know, I don't know names of players or anything like that. I subscribe to the second channel. Thank you. Make sure you subscribe to the second channel. I'm going to post it again in the chat. I'm going to keep posting it. I'll keep posting it again and again. Is grounding the earth demonic? It sounds like it. I don't know, but it sounds demonic. Do you know Kingdom Music? Yes, I know Brian Trejo well. He's a good friend of mine. What are the days for Atlanta? Go to my website. Is that slash schedule? My mom said, family, share the stream, especially those you know that are in the dark about this despicable holiday. Thank you, mom. My mom's always up in the chat showing love. At Nancy, 18th through the 20th. Uh, the 18th through the 20th. There you go. What are the days for Atlanta? Nancy, if you go to my website, IsaiahSaldivar.com slash schedule, I'll have all the dates there for you and all the info. All right. Praise the Lord. How can I write a comment to the read on Venmo on a Venmo donation? If you give, there should be a spot for comments. On Venmo, there's a spot like what's the donation for? You could write a comment there. Jenny, stream with you still has the record. We've broken, yeah, we've broken 10,000 live viewers, I think three times. One of the times was the Demon Slayers. One of the times was with Jenny. And then I forgot the other time we broke 10,000. Tonight, I think we would have broke 8,000 if Facebook was working. Because Facebook, we usually would get like 2,000 when John Ramirez is on. So I think we would have had about 8,000 live tonight if, if Facebook. But we had 6,200 on just YouTube, which is crazy. That's really, really high for YouTube. So, I mean, uh, it's amazing. Thank God. Um, start talking it, it, sir. I don't know what that means. Do you ever do college events? No, not right now. I used to preach at colleges before I've spoke at colleges, but I'm just not doing that right now. Uh, deliverance in the theater. Yeah, we're going to be streaming in and I'll give you more info as we find out about that as the day gets closer. But yes, we will be our documentary on deliverance that I'm, uh, that I'm in and a part of. It's not my documentary, but I'm in the documentary and a part of it. I'll be promoting it as well. That is going to be in uh, theaters in January. I don't know if I'm allowed to announce the date yet, but we'll do a show about it and stuff sooner. I think it's uh, January, I think, 17th, I think. I don't know if I'm, I guess I'm allowed to say it. Why would I not be allowed to say it? But I think it's January 17th. I hope I'm allowed to say it. If not, I just said it to 3,000 people. Sometimes I say things that I didn't know I wasn't supposed to say. So, you know, your boy's out here leaking stuff. Maybe I shouldn't be leaking. I don't know. I think it's fine. But I'll have all the ticket sales. We got to sell it out, guys. They said if we sell a lot and fill up the theaters, then we can play it for two weeks and we could go international with it. So it's going to be two nights. And then if it does good, they'll go for two weeks. Yo, Isaiah, you remember me? JG, I don't know because I, don't, I can't tell by your name just being JG. Why are so many churches lukewarm? Because so many pastors are lukewarm. 
Don't tell us any secrets. Hey, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You know what I mean? I have a lot of people listening when I'm talking. I talk for a long time, so you never know what's going to happen. The Deliverance documentary is going to be amazing. What's your opinions on Christmas? I don't really have any opinions on it. We celebrate Christmas as the birth of Jesus. Now, do I think Jesus was born on Christmas Day? No, I don't. But I celebrate on that day. You say, why would you not celebrate Halloween, but you celebrate Christmas? Because Christmas doesn't glorify witchcraft, magic, and darkness. That's why. Halloween, like, advertises celebrating magic, witchcraft, all that stuff. Uh, Mom, I'm working on it. I got you, Mom. I'm working on it. Yeah, I've been talking to him on Instagram, so we'll get him on soon. Yeah, the documentary trailer is fire. Um, they're going to be making a new one. So I'm going to post the new one when it comes out. I'll be posting the new one. But the old one's fire as well. I will not be selling any merch, Josh, at the Atlanta event. But you can buy my merch online. But I don't bring merch with me. Are you going to get a cop fade? I don't know what that means, but I get a razor fade every single week. The same fade every week. Has Andrew Tate reached out to you? I don't know because my business email that's connected to my YouTube is so flooded with thousands of brand invites. Like people ask me to be part of like do brand deals and collabs. And like I got reached out to by Amazon, which is pretty crazy last week about being an Amazon influencer and being a part of their influencer program. And I'm like, what in the world? But I haven't, I'm not doing any brand deals. So th that was not a weird flex, by the way. That sounded really like I was bragging, like Amazon reached out to me, but it is just weird. But my point is, I have like hundreds of emails on my business email that I got to go through. So if he would have reached out to me, I wouldn't have gotten it. So I need to look through it and see. But yeah, it's weird. Andrew Tate posted my video on his page because he had to download the video and then upload it to his page, which is just, I don't know if he got the point of my video. And by the way, in his video, he wasn't saying I'm why he's not a Christian or why he's a Muslim. He was saying the, the drag queen pastor that I was calling out is the reason why he's not a Christian. So for some of you like, I can't believe Andrew Tate said you're the reason he's Muslim. He wasn't talking about me. He was talking about the drag queen in the video that I was calling out. And I was agreeing with him. I was like, I literally am calling them out. Like that was the point of the video. Where's Carl? Uh, you know, Carl's, Carl's, uh, Carl's all right. He just chills in the back and listens. He chills in the back and listens. You've just been taught what an influencer is. No, I've known what an influencer is forever. We're just talking about it tonight. I'm not, listen, I'm a nerd, y'all. I'm online. I know all the young people lingo, okay? Can I get a W stream in the chat? I, I'm, I'm with it, all right? I'm, I'm all been in the online culture. I'm a YouTuber, okay? So I look at what's going on on the platforms and stuff. I just hit my arm on the door. Ooh, that feels bad. Does Carl like Ray Comfort? I think. Are you anticipating season three of The Chosen? Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Higher Quest, say God bless your ministry. Thank you, Higher Quest. There we go. Got the W. See, look, I'm with it. W stream. Come on. Come on now. Carl needs glasses. Carl the transformed dove. What about the bobblehead? Oh, the bobblehead's still here. The bobblehead's head's turning sideways, though. I don't know what's going on with them. It's like, man, I have neck issues. He has neck issues. His head's starting to mysteriously turn sideways. So, I don't know. By the way, a follower of the stream made me this and sent me it. Or got it made. I did not make a bobblehead of myself, okay? That's just weird. But yeah, I appreciate you, whoever it was that made me that and sent it to me. Check your website. I will after this. Thank you. All right, we've been live for two hours and one minute. We'll be on here for a little bit more. Again, pray about becoming a monthly partner and you'll get an invite to the stream on Thursday. We do appreciate you guys. Every single month, people cancel and every single month, people join. So it's a rotating door that we just appreciate. I can't read the website donations on stream. I don't have access to them until I get off and go on my app and go through my, my emails. The website ones go to my email and I'm not going to scroll through all my emails right now on stream. So yeah, that's how that works. My mom said, I'm proud of the patience you have with everyone. Thank you, mom. I appreciate you. It's such a blessing to have my mom, my dad, all my family. Well, not all my family, but a bunch of my family watch the streams. Like my little sister was in the comments earlier. My dad, my mom. My in-laws, my wife, like people are, you know, it's just families in here. And I really appreciate that. The support means a lot. Is there a way to meet and greet you in Atlanta? I don't know yet what the meet and greet will be, Josh, because wait, is that the one who asked Josh? Are you the one that asked? I don't know, but 
because there's gonna be 5,000 people. So you gotta, you gotta like, you know, how am I gonna meet 5,000 people? I've done times where I've taken 800 pictures and it takes several hours. So, someone said if you take 15 PayPal's out of 6,000, that's 0.0025% that give. Wow, good math there. So yeah, I appreciate all my family watching. Dad, love you. I, my dad just texted me, so he's obviously still watching. Appreciate you, Dad. Yes, there's going to be 5,000 people in Atlanta. It is going to fill up. We have over 3,000 registered. The night sessions are free. So it's going to be huge, 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 huge. Please do the voice changer. Uh, I don't have the voice changer set up right now. I mean, I'm going to get off right now. So, you know, Grandma Vivian. It's actually Grandma Lillian. She's doing amazing. Unless your name's Grandma Vivian. Maybe your Grandma Vivian. And uh, that's what you're talking about. Do you think the V is the mark of the beast? No, it's not. The V is not the mark of the beast. If you don't believe the Bible, then it is. But if you believe the Bible, then it's not the mark of the beast. Do the breaking news. I've already done it a bunch of times, but I'll do it again, okay? I mean, I've already, I didn't do it tonight, but. All right, coming at you live from YouTube International Television. We are at, right now, 4.7 thousand likes. Let's get that to 5,000 tonight. Coming at you live from YouTube International Television. Let's get those likes up tonight. There you go. I can't say no to people in the chat. You know, you guys are just too nice. I just love you guys too much. Can't say no. You guys are just, you know, I love you guys. Appreciate you guys. You guys are awesome. Okay. Hey. How's your family doing? They're doing good. Thank you so much, Ryan. Thank you. I am leaving. I have carved pumpkins and thrown my back out. And my back hurts. Oh, don't carve pumpkins. Don't carve pumpkins? I don't know. But God bless you. Thanks for being here. Is Donald Trump the Antichrist? No, I don't think Donald Trump's the Antichrist. Not according to the Bible. Wait, who is this? This is Isaiah Salabar. That's Isaiah. See, I love you guys too much, Jose. You guys ask, and you know, I do it. Do, 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 do. Let's see. When are you coming to Singapore? I'm not sure when I'm coming to Singapore. Imagine preaching with that voice. That'd be hilarious. Is there a restless leg spirit? I don't know. Hilarious. I'm glad you're laughing. Some of you need to laugh. Roller skating revival? Listen, I want to go to a roller rink with my kids. So Josh, I think you work at a roller rink, don't you? One of you do. I need to find a good roller rink. As if someone starts gossiping to you and you think it's gossip, what's the best thing to do? Tell them to stop gossiping to you. Just say, does my forehead say trash can? And stop pouring garbage into my mind. All right. Thank you for that. Listen, you guys ask, you know what I mean? What could I say? Should Christians watch anime? I don't know, because I don't watch anime. How much do you love us, bro? A lot. Isaiah, will you preach all four services on Sunday? Yes, I'm preaching four services back to back. Pray for me. Thank you. Is it a sin to have a career in law enforcement? Of course not. We love all you in law enforcement that protect and serve. Of course not. It's not a sin. I'm stealing the garbage metaphor. Someone said, I'm stealing that garbage metaphor. I thought you were saying my met metaphor was garbage, but you're saying I'm stealing the garbage metaphor. Yeah, go for it. Please make sure that you like a broad toast. Everybody, do you want an intellect button? Do it for Morgan Freeman. Thank you. All right, we're going to get off here soon. I'm in phase three of the Dallas hiring. Praise the Lord. I'll be praying you get the job. I don't work at the roller rink anymore, but I still skate. Hey, I got to get over to the roller rink with the kids. Do you like coffee? No, I'm not a coffee fan. I worked at Starbucks for three years and burned myself out. I don't think there's anything wrong with coffee. I just don't drink coffee. But my wife loves coffee. Is trick-or-treating bad? I wouldn't trick-or-treat. We just talked about tonight the story of trick-or-treating. Oh, trunk-or-treating. 
Uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it, but listen, guys, let me just say this. Whether you trunk or treat or trick or treat or celebrate Halloween is not salvific. Okay. It's not a, it's not a, uh, reason to divide over. It's not, it's not, you're not going to lose your salvation. It's not a salvation issue, but we still advise you not to do it, even though it's not salvation issue. But I want to be clear on that. You thinking like that person going to hell because they trick or treated. That's not, that's not how that works. That is a crazy voice. Yeah, it is. Somebody's announcer voice. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the broadcast. Tonight has been epic. Oh, now Russia has deployed nukes. I'll not. All right. Someone said, buy candy for your kids. No need to go trick or treating. Listen, my kids get candy all year. You know what I'm saying? We got candy in stock right now. So I'm probably going to throw out some candy. People are like, my kids aren't going to get candy. I'm like, you could just go to Save Mart and buy candy. Just go to the gas station and buy candy. All right. I love you guys. I don't want to get off here. 3,000 of you on, hanging out, talking, having fun. The chat's going crazy. Have you ever had Krispy Kreme? Of course. Krispy Kreme is amazing. Melts in your mouth. Actually, now I want Krispy Kreme. I think the one that was not far from my house, they closed it down. Opinion on Stranger Things? It's strange. I've never seen it. I don't know. But if it has horror and stuff in it, I wouldn't watch it. If God is not giving you a spirit of fear. Why would you let Stranger Things give you a spirit of fear? I didn't even know who Andrew Tate was until I mentioned you mentioned him. Yeah, he's been, he it's okay. If you don't know who Andrew Tate is, don't feel free, don't feel the liberty to look him up because I'm definitely not promoting him. But he's been the most Googled person for the last like three or four months. So in the world. So it's pretty crazy. But anyways, that's a whole nother story. Maybe we bring on Andrew Tate on a different night and we witness to him. Hmm? Talk about Christianity. Now that he says he went from being a Christian to a Muslim. If you haven't seen my video exposing Islam, you should go watch it. Look at Enoch opinions. I haven't read it yet. I'm going to read it. That's on my to-do list. Read it and make a video. Chick-fil-A or fire wings. Uh, I'm burnt out on Chick-fil-A. So probably fire wings. Wingstop. How about that? Wingstop. Oh, Wingstop sounds kind of good. Wingstop sounds kind of good right now. So I'm like, how do I tell someone about deliverance? Uh, this is the easiest way. Send one of my videos. If you're afraid to tell somebody about deliverance, then send my videos. Oh, and by the way, guys, I get my braces off. If you didn't know, I have braces down here. I've had them on for like seven months. I get them off on Thursday. Prayerfully, hopefully. Supposed to get them off on Thursday, hopefully. I don't have them anymore. Some of you are like, I didn't even know you had braces. Yeah. Well, I mean, on Andrew Tate obviously seen my stuff because he went and downloaded one of my videos. So, I don't know. So, what do you guys... Okay, let's, this is a great place to ask you guys this. What do you guys think about... I'm literally asking you because I've been debating this, like... Because there's guys online that are, like, practicing psychics, right? Or practicing Buddhists or Muslims or Hindus, whatever. Not on Tuesday on our podcast, because that's reserved for Christian teaching. Not on Monday. But what are your thoughts on... Let me put a poll up. Let me put a poll up. That's what we're going to do. We're going to put a poll up. Thoughts on bringing non-Christians on the stream. Okay? Because here's my thing. There was a guy who was a psychic who was like, I believe in Jesus and God, but I also believe in all this other stuff. I was like, man, what if I bring him on the stream and enlighten him? Like, literally share the truth with him. Talk with him. But... I don't want you guys thinking I'm bringing people on to teach you that are not Christian. Like, you know, all these Catholics, famous Catholic people asked to come on. And I'm like, no, I don't want to bring you on because I'm not going to have you teaching your doctrine on my show. But what about me talking to them? Uh, there you go. Thoughts on bringing non-Christians on the show. On the stream. Okay, because my I'm kind of conflicted because I'm like one part of me. I'm like, I don't want to give them a platform. Like, imagine I bring on one of these guys who's a psychic that believes in God and all this. And says, yeah, demons are real, but you know, I'm not invoking demons. And I bring him on and tell him straight up what he's doing is wrong. And like, he's bringing demons on and like kind of enlighten him the best I can lovingly. But then you guys go to his channel 
you guys are like, what is this channel? And then you start looking at his videos of him being a psychic, talking to spirits. That's why I don't want to platform. I don't want to platform people that are not Christian. So I, I think, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe am I wrong? Am I right? Let me know. It's a weird tension. It's a weird tension. Like a guy like Andrew Tate, right? I, I don't want him preaching his stuff to you guys. So, and I also don't want to bring him on and be like, you can't talk. So that's why it's like, it's kind of weird. Obviously I'm not changing. I'm bringing truth. I'm not going to conform to anybody that I'm bringing them on my thing. Right. But at the same time, it's just weird. Have you seen the interview with Anna Christ? No, I haven't. A lot of you saying yes. A lot of you saying no. A lot of you saying praying about it. Like bringing on Muslims and talking to them or Mormons, but not a debate. You know what I mean? And I don't want to send you guys over to like, imagine I bring a Mormon on and all of a sudden you're like, oh, maybe Mormons are the truth. It's like, no, I don't want to confuse anybody. Change your light colors. I got you. We actually haven't been having fun with the lights lately. We kind of, we kind of fell off there with the lights. I don't I think what happened was my scenes got messed up. How's that? How's the green? We used to do like the voice activated one all the time. Remember that? Remember that back in the day? Check, check. That's voice activated, okay? This one's voice activated too. Watch. That's a little bit too much though. That's a little bit too much. I think this one's not as wild. Check, one, two. Okay, these are all... Why are these blinking so crazy? Something's going on here. Blink, one, two. Okay, I guess that's... That's all right. That's voice activated. All right, let's look at the poll. Please put purple on. Purple, purple. Oh, sorry if I'm, I don't want to give anyone a seizure. Uh, I don't have purple saved, I don't think. I could do a custom one. I, again, guys, I just, I'm so nice. I'm so nice. I'm serious. There you go. That's like going to change between purple and a bunch of other colors. Whenever you guys ask for something, I feel so obligated to be like, okay, I got you. And I'm joking about like being so nice, but I am. Okay, a lot of you are saying no. Let's look at the poll. If you're if you're giving your opinion, let me know in the poll. Let me know in the poll. Okay, don't just comment. Go in the poll and vote. 500 votes. There's 2,700 of you watching. 484 votes. 67% said yes. And 34% said no. And the no's are actually climbing right now. Okay, the no's are growing. Where's the poll? It's on YouTube. It's on the comment section. So everyone's saying pray about it. I'll pray about it. I just don't want to platform any people, right? God has given me this platform and I want to be careful who, I don't want to be so careful that I'm religious where I'm like, I can't bring anybody on, but I also want to be careful that I don't platform any ungodly people on. Imagine Andrew Tate calls you out to box. I'm definitely not boxing Andrew Tate. Keep it only Christians. A lot of people saying no. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to platform them. It would definitely not be on a Tuesday night. We're not, it would not be on the Revival Lifestyle podcast night. After you explain your concerns, maybe like no. Yeah, a lot of you are changing to no now that I'm telling you why I don't want to bring on. It looks like y'all are changing your votes to no. 64% yes, 36% no. So I, I don't like that 36% of you don't agree with it and think it's a bad idea. So I'd have to just pray about it. Do it on Wednesday night. I, I've seen like really good videos of like conversations with so-and-so and so-and-so. But again, when we do these conversations with these people, are we platforming them? Change my vote to no. Change my vote to no. Bunch of you are. Yeah, we'll see. I'll pray about it. It's probably going to be a no. A bunch of you are saying, never mind, no. You probably didn't think about me sending people to their platform, right? Like, again, imagine I bring on a psychic and interview him and tell him, you know, give him the truth. Tell him what he's doing is demonic and they're demons that he's invoking and they're dangerous and give him that. But imagine like one person out of the, say, it gets, say it gets 30,000 views. It'll probably get 100,000 views, honestly. It'd be huge because people love just any controversy one person leaves my broadcast goes to his page and gets sucked into the new age and starts following what he's doing that would be a, a huge l that'd be a big no right exactly 
What if I brought on a Mormon and one person was like, maybe I'll check out Mormonism and became Mormon because of my video with the Mormon? That's a huge no. So I think I'm answering my own question here. It'll bring confusion. Yeah, I think I think that's I think that's right. Change y'all's votes to no. Listen, I'm not doing it. I literally put a poll up, y'all. So relax. Now it's four. Now it's 37 no. So yeah, probably won't be doing it. Everybody's saying no. The whole chat saying no. No, I didn't shave today. For those of you asking, why is there face on your hair, Isaiah? It's because I didn't shave today. No, because there's too many unsafe people here. True. Favorite Wingstop flavor? Lemon pepper. Lemon pepper. Yeah, I don't want to contribute to anybody getting confused. Okay, no, we're not doing it. We're not doing it. We're not doing it. We will not. End poll. We're not going to bring non-Christians on, okay? We're not doing it. Relax, everybody. Hold on. Let me do this. You guys are getting crazy. Let me bring on Carl. I'm going to have to bring on both the animals. Hold on. We're bringing them both on to calm you guys down. We're going to have to do a double. A double-double here. All right, everybody, relax. Uh, if you just type in Halloween history, uh, hi um, history of Halloween history channel, you'll find the thing. All right, everybody, relax. Everybody, relax. Change the subject. All right, I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Oh, what a good night. We've been live for two hours and 18 minutes. Thank you for partnering. Thank you for giving. I will see you guys Friday night, most likely. I am filming on Friday for a special YouTube channel that you'll see soon, but uh, I can't tell you yet. But I'm filming a special video that will be announced. I'm filming Friday, and I'll hopefully be home by Friday night to live stream for you guys. I love, uh, what's your opinion on Hollywood Horror Nights? Don't go. If you want a spirit of fear, go to a haunted house and horror night and all that. But if you don't want a spirit of fear, then don't go. If you want a spirit of fear, watch horror movies, okay? If you want to know how to get demons, watch horror movies. You're not tired, you're capping? No, I'm not capping. I need to go eat and get off here. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Great night tonight. Awesome numbers. 6,200 on YouTube. Incredible. Wait. Has my voice changer been on this whole time? No, that was, that was the middle of the time. Okay. Oh, that uh, scared me. On. Check one, two. Can't hear you. Muted. What is going on? Okay, I switched it back. What? That was weird. That was weird. Okay, I love you guys. Appreciate you guys. We're not bringing on any non Christians. This is only Christians. We're not going to try to convert anybody live on stream. You went mute. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. We fixed it though. Okay, love you guys. See you guys. Make sure you go check out the second channel. Go watch the videos there. Go watch the videos on the second channel. Love you guys. Good night. Good night. I'll see you guys. Thanks for being here. I do appreciate this community. So many of you guys are so awesome. Don't leave. I'm sad. Don't leave. The when I say don't leave, I don't mean tonight, but like some of you that are faithful to the stream and then all of a sudden you disappear for months, it makes me sad. So stay, stay tuned. We're live every Monday, Tuesday, and Friday. Go watch my video on Andrew Tate on and why Islam is false. That could be linked down below. I mean, that could be linked. That's on my channel. And then go watch the second channel and subscribe. Thank you, guys. Love you, guys. See you on Sunday at Life Song. See you Friday live.